It is a college football Saturday in the city of Riverside as RCC, the number one team in the state, takes on the Grossmont Griffins. Gazal Hassan back with you. Back by my side is uh, Jeffrey Gorham. The Tigers, Jeff, they were on the bye week last week. I saw you talking to defense coordinator James Cook. What did RCC do over the bye week to get ready? I'll tell you what. Coach Cook said they needed an edge. They went hard in bye week. They didn't take any time off. They want to have a little toughness, a little a little grittiness to them. So this week, look for an angry Tigers. <laughs> wow. The number one team in the state playing the Grossmont Griffins. They're led on offense by their quarterback, Trenton Giles. On defense, their fantastic middle linebacker, Colton Guerrero. The Griffins haven't won a game yet, but you don't want them to get healthy on your watch if you're the RCC Tigers, Jeff. No, and if you're the RCC Tigers, you're going to worry about They threw 41 times last game. They only uh, connected on 14 of them, but the young secondary, the greenies, as Coach Cook said, are going to have their day full with some passing. College football Saturday at Wheelock Stadium. So great to be back here. The Tigers and the Griffins coming up next on Riverside TV. Fielded at the eight yard line on the kickoff. Grossmont kicking to RCC. Espadrone brings it out as we got a little bit of a quick start out to the 14 yard line. And that's where RCC will start it. Gazal and Jeff back with you here at Wheelock Stadium. RCC taking on Grossmont today. Welcome. College football Saturday in the city of Riverside. RCC, the number one ranked team in the state. They are the sixth ranked team, according to J.C. Gridiron, in the nation. And Jordan Barton will lead them out, the quarterback, coming off the bye week. And, Jeff, they wanted to get a little nasty here over the bye week. Let's see how it translates here. First and ten from the 14, Barton looking to throw. Looking to the outside, it's complete to the 31-yard line. That's DeMarion Young up to about the 32, 17-yard pickup on the play. Well, I'll tell you what, they're going to try to pepper this defense. Remember, this Griffin team's 0-5. They haven't put up a lot of points. They're going to test this defense of the Griffins. Let's see if they're going to go deep here uh, with Barton trying to spread that field. First and 10 from the 32, the motion man, and they'll throw it to him sitting down at the 36-yard line over the 40 and pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line, making the play on defense for Grossmont. Raymond Bernard pushes out. The pass receiver for RCC making the catch is uh, Jesse, or excuse me, uh, Jacques Modica. Yeah, Modica. I mean, two two players already receiving uh, footballs. Remember, eleven uh, receivers connected in that game two weeks ago at uh, San Jacinto. Barton throwing and it's complete. That's Ernest McDaniel sliding down into Griffin territory. After about a seven-yard pickup, it'll be second and three from the Griffin 48. And then moving the ball down against the Griffin defense is Jordan Barton. Clock ticking. It's funny, when I talked to Tom Kraft on Thursday, he seemed to think, he seemed to explain he was going to emphasize the run game. They've come out with four straight passes. Here's Bryce Strong running, and he's to the open part of the field. Breaks one tackle. Could he go? And he's into the house. 48 yard touchdown run for Bryce Strong. Tiger touchdown. Wow. Strong taking it strong. Taking a hit after hit after hit. And just taking off for pay dirt. 85-yard drive uh, ends on a 48-yard run by Bryce Strong, 13-28 of the first quarter. And very quickly they're on the board. And here's your favorite kicker, Gabe Panikowski, on to try the PAT. I hope he hits the scoreboard. I was watching him uh, before the game. He was smacking the scoreboard. Let's see if he can do it here. Up and good, and it's a 7 nothing lead for RCC. Seats aren't even warm yet. A minute 32, and they're on the board, Jeff. Well, the four plays, three different receivers caught the football, and then you go to Mr. Strong. If they can do this all day long, it'll be a quick outing, 
and great to see these guys getting in rhythm here early. Yeah, running over the left side of that line, Christian Perry and uh, Jaden Forbotten got the start against Mount San Jacinto. So there's been some shifting around on the offensive line for Coach Tom Kraft. There are a couple of different guys he wants to get in the rotation, Jeff. Yeah, and you're going to have to be deep. We've seen this Riverside team so far this year. They're the deepest team they've had in years. There aren't the big superstars because they, they all share the wealth, but this is a team that could be dangerous, especially if they can figure it out on the defensive side of the football to where they are just knocking teams out. Alicia Gooden dotting back deep to receive along with Carlos Jimenez for Grossmont. Panikowski will tee it up. Yeah, this defense of RCC, very young, especially in the secondary. Coach Cook called them greenies. Touchback for Grossmont. They'll have their first offensive possession of the game. Grossmont 0-5 on the year. They've lost their first two league games as well. They last made the postseason in 2013. Recent years, uh, they played four times against RCC, dating back to 2014, which is their last win against the Tigers back in September of 2014, 38-28. Michael Jordan, their head coach. Wait, Michael Jordan. In his 17th year, not that Michael Jordan. He's the GOAT. He can coach football, too. Oh, not the same one you said. I'm sorry. I got very excited. Trenton Giles is the starter at quarterback, the sophomore from Grossmont High School, as well as Grossmont College. He's got nearly 800 total yards this year between running and passing the football. They've tried a couple of different quarterbacks, Jeff, have the Griffins of Grossmont trying to get something going. But they will throw the football. Let's see if they test, like I said, this very green secondary of RCC. First and 10 from the 25, and right into the teeth of the defense, their first play from scrimmage. Carrying the ball is Jaheim Mendenhall, and maybe a yard. Check that, excuse me. Kyle, Kyle Gordon, the freshman from El Cajon Valley High with the carry, maybe a yard on the play. Well, you look at that offensive line, and I uh, from uh, Grossmont, you look at number 73, Sean Rude. That is one big fella. Rude goes 6'5", 330, and I think they're being kind. Yeah, Rude out of uh, Granite Hills High. He's a three-year starter in high school and one of the anchors on the O-line for Grossmont. Second down and 10 from the 25. They'll give it right up the middle again to Gordon. Gordon running right and bent back. Third down coming up. Gordon has, uh, excuse me, Gr- Grossmont hasn't had much luck running the football. Just 44 yards per game, 43.6 yards running it. But trying to change things around. They're coming off their bye week as well. Now look at that play. Good fake by Giles. So they got a yard on the play, third and nine coming up. Seven nothing Tigers. They got out quickly. Four play, 85 yard drive, third down, three man front. Can the defense get off the field for RCC? Giles thrown to the near side, incomplete. Intended receiver on the play, Kenneth Calupe, or Kalupi, from a Poway, a penalty on the play. Let's see what it is. Fourth down coming up, and one of the offensive linemen for Grossmont down. That's Ulolo Samoata. He's the sophomore out of Steel Canyon High. Slow to get up. Athletic training staff out. Good to have you back, buddy. Yeah, it's great to be back. You know, I, I had a rare uh, evening off last night, and, and I, I feel refreshed and ready to go. I was looking forward to this noon start. We had a, a, a nice, what do they call it, the eclipse earlier. Yes. We walked out of my house earlier this morning, and, and it was eerie. I thought the world was coming to an end. Then I realized we had a solar, uh, a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse. Solar. It's like the beginning of a movie or at least a Law & Order episode, right? It was, yeah. It, it did have that tint. <laughs> so players still down. Thanks for joining us here. Seven nothing RCC over Grossmont. Gazal Hassan back with you along with Jeff Gorham. Riverside TV. We have Pep Fernandez on the sideline. Let's throw it down to Pep. 
Hey, Gazal, just to share a little bit of our pregame conversation that we all enjoyed with James Cook, the defensive coordinator for the Tigers. We asked him about the bye week and coming off the bye week. We asked him, it was a little, you know, chill and relaxing and kind of, you know, tone things down a little bit. And he said, no, quite the opposite, actually. They wanted these guys to get dialed back in and have an attitude, have a little bit of an edge as they go back into conference play now in the back half of the season. So a touchdown on the opening drive. I've seen some big hits on defense. It looks like they got the message during the bye week. Jeff and Gazal, back up to you guys. John Butcher, the freshman from Grossmont High School, on to punt. High snap, puts his foot into it. Monica back. He'll fill it at the 31-yard line. Monica breaks the first line of defense. Now dancing inside. He'll go down at about the 36, still fighting. They'll push him back a couple of yards. 43-yard kick and about a 5-yard return. The Tigers will start at the 36-yard line with 11.47 to play here in the first quarter. They already lead it 7 and nothing. Let's see if they do the same thing or if they're going to go right to strong. Let's see if they saw something on that offense or that defensive line they can go after. But here's the return. Modica got a little lost there. Thought he was uh, going forward and ended up uh, about two or three yards behind where he started. Barton to throw. Looking for McDaniel, and McDaniel comes up with it, drops the football. Let's see what they rule here. Did he have control of it? No, they're going to say he was down by contact. So all the way to the 35-yard line, a 28-yard completion, first and 10 Tigers. So McDaniel's getting... Check that 29-yard completion. McDaniel targeted twice on two receptions here early on. Barton, dump it off underneath to Bryce Strong. Strong's got some space. Strong to the second level. Strong to Painter. Touchdown, Tigers. 35-yard catch and run by Bryce Strong. He's definitely getting his cardio in today, Jeff. A 48-yard run, a 35-year-old, a 35-yard catch and run. Hey, all-purpose yards. He could end up with a thousand today. He is on fire. So already 13 to nothing here, 11.26 to play in the first quarter. And here's Janikowski, 64-yard drive for the Tigers. And now Janikowski, or excuse me, Panikowski will try to make it a 14 nothing game, and he does. There's old Gabe. Gabe for you. But look, four different receivers now catching the football. Both uh, touchdowns by Strong. Here's a great reception. Another great run untouched this yeah. time. Good downfield block there made by RCC. Dominic Roush. Roush out of Glendora, Jeff. He is a converted defensive lineman, a defensive lineman that Tom Kraft elected to flip to the offensive line. We'll get a chance to see him out doing some playing on the, on the regular rotation now. So that's one of the things they did in the bye week, Jeff. They shifted some personnel on the O-line. Yeah, they talk, you know, they talked about the defense. They shifted some guys defensively based on how they've been playing. There's a lot of confidence from uh, Coach Cook on the defensive side of the ball as well. So Panikowski booms it. And again, another touchback will come out to the 25, 14-0. RCC leads Grossmont here. And the Griffins, you know, having a bit of a tough season this year. And RCC, so you were at the game uh, in Menifee. It was a 41-17 game, and I talked to Tom Kraft on Thursday. And despite the win, he really was not happy. No, and I think they played well in spurts, but I agree with Coach. I thought, you know, they had put out 28 in the first quarter, and you thought they were going to go on and put up 100. But they just kind of stalled offensively, and defensively they gave up uh, a lot of passes on a lot of run game that normally the Tigers don't give up like we see on this play. They are not going to allow Grossmont to run the football today. Gordon running to the outside and gets maybe a yard on the play. In on the hit, Tony Alima along with a host of Tigers. Philander Lee also in on the hit for RCC, a one-yard pickup on the play. Ryan Rodiak split out to the top of the formation for Grossmont. Giles, the throw to the outside, incomplete. Intended receiver on the play, James Johnson. Johnson, the sophomore. 
Johnson out of Granite Hills High in the San Diego area. He had three catches last week against, or two weeks ago against Palomar. Third and nine coming up. As we're getting some subs in, I notice number 97, my favorite player on this team right now. Love watching him play, the great Isaiah Bogar. Yeah, it was uh, teammates with C.J. Stroud in high school and now trying to make his own way. Stroud announcing his presence with authority in the National Football League. Third and nine coming up from the 26. Giles back to throw. Here comes Bogar. Gets the, thro the flag, gets the throw away. Nice juggling catch at midfield on the Tiger Visage by Trayton Ned. A flag on the play as well. We'll see what that's all about. Ned heals it in. He's a freshman from the San Fernando Valley. Played at Notre Dame Sherman Oaks. They're going to call a hold on the defensive hold here, I believe. So the ball all the way to the 46-yard line. So a 28-yard pickup, and Grossmont's going to take the play. So two holds called on the Tigers. Another look at the play. Nice job by Giles to kind of stay in there with Bogar bearing down on him. And nice catch by Ned going up between two defenders for RCC. Went up between both Richard Sweeney and Dante Bowers. Here's the give again to Gordon running right on the painted Tiger Visage. He'll bull forward about the 41-yard line. So give him five yards on the play, second and five coming up. So a little life here from Grossmont offensively on these last two plays. Able to run the football here, get a, you know five yards. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. They're really committed to running the football. Now listen, sometimes the stats dictate the game, but sometimes the game dictates the stats. They've been playing from behind, the Griffins. So a lot of times they don't have the opportunity to run. So, you know, even though they're behind here, it's just 14 nothing. Michael Jordan and his staff, they want to get the running game established. That does two things. Obviously, if you can move the ball on the run, you move the ball, but also you control the clock. You control the clock, and you're going to spread this defense out. If you can, if you can own the running game a bit, it'll help out your passing game. Giles will take it himself. Giles dancing inside the 40 to the 36. Looks like uh, he was just short of the first down. I thought he'd lean forward and got it, but the line judge will mark him at the 37, not the 36, just a yard short of the first down. Good run there by Giles, but takes a hit. That's one you got to slide, brother. Well, he's looking for that marker. He's looking for the first down. Jawan Nixon, the sophomore. You won't have Jawan Nixon to kick around anymore. No, he's heck of a player. <laughs> Tom Kraft was explaining to me uh, that he's one of the guys on defense that he feels has emerged. Third and one. First man through, and that should have a first down over the 35 for the Griffins. That was Kavion Jones-Bell. So Jones Bell, the freshman, the big fella, 6'1", 220 out of Christian High in San Diego to the 35, and the sticks move up. Good drive here for the Griffins, start at their own 25. Yeah, they moved the sticks twice in this drive. You know, they can kick the football. If you look at their scores, a lot of a lot of field goals, so they do have a kicker that can that cause some problems for the Tigers. Jorge Aguilar, the sophomore out of Lincoln High in San Diego, is their place kicker. Great high school in San Diego, isn't it? Out of the backfield, it's complete. And inside the 30-yard line, making the catch, Kenneth Kalupi. Uh, McQueen on the stop for RCC. Another look at the play. It's a big hit from McQueen. Watch this. McQueen now, you know, it's interesting. They're moving him down a little bit. Now, they played the 4-2-5 in the second half against Mount San Jacinto. We were talking to James Cook before the game. Feels that uh, uh, using uh, McQueen's ability, kind of moving him up and down, will help them out. He can protect against the run. Obviously, you saw there some pretty good pass defense. Second and four. Giles looking up top. He's got a man. It's picked off. Looks like the pass was intercepted by the Making the play, Dayton Ford. Ford out of Martin Luther King High just jumped up and took the ball away. Ball had a little bit too much air under it, allowed Dayton to make the adjustment and the interception. Here's another look at it. Yeah, that's a jump ball, and that's just the – look, he goes right, right over the back, grabs it. James Johnson, the intended receiver, and they'll take over. Looks like at the two-yard line, so Dayton Ford makes the play. Remember, this is Giles, 
will throw the football. He did throw four interceptions in the last game that they played two weeks ago. They, have, you know, he's thrown I think seven interceptions in those four games that he's played in. Make that eight, so two per game. Those could be a costly turnover. A lot of real estate to navigate, and the Jesse Campbell makes the catch, and he's tackled almost immediately. So maybe a yard on the play. Making the tackle is Tybon Palafay out of Farrington High. They gave him a yard, so second and nine. Campbell in motion. Here's the throw to Monica. No, this is Campbell. Campbell in stride. Nobody is going to stop him. 97-yard touchdown pass. Jesse Campbell reels it in and does the rest on his own. Touchdown, Tigers. Wow. Number three, Jesse Campbell. And Mark connecting for a Tiger touchdown. So five receptions by this core of receivers, but none bigger than that one as Jesse Campbell gets his first touchdown of the day. The sophomore out of modern day, no flags. What a great run. Panikowski on to try the PAT. And it'll be 21 nothing. It was interesting. I talked to Tom Kraft on Thursday. And it was interesting because he was the one, and we get another look at the play to Campbell. Wow. Somebody was just a blown coverage. Campbell got a step, and that was it, and he was gone. He told me, actually, he said, you know, don't let Grossmont's record fool you. They have a pretty good front seven, but I feel we can attack them on the outside. They think our receivers have developed. They've played pretty well down the year, and we think that next level, they'll be able to attack on the outside, and that's exactly what they've been able to do. 21 nothing Tigers, 6.44 to play first quarter. Pep Fernandez, third member of our broadcast team. Great to have you, Pep. Let's throw it down to the sideline. Hey guys, great to be here. A great start here for the RCC Tigers. You might be surprised to hear that Jordan Martin, the starting quarterback for the Tigers, down here on the sideline saying, don't stop, be relentless, keep this going. Now, they'll probably take the starters out at some point, but right now they've got their teeth into Grossmont, and they are not going to let go right now as Jordan Barton once more after that big 98-yard pass play. Another touchback off the foot of Panikowski. And, I mean, listen, it's early, okay? There's a lot of time left in this game. But after what happened against Mount San Jacinto at Benefee, we can say that the battle station, Tom Craft's battle station, Jeff, fully operational. Yeah, I'll tell you what, this is some great football here early. This is the best we've seen them start. First and 10, Grossmont, from the 25-yard line. If you're the Griffins, you just want to get something going. Let's get a drive. They had a drive earlier, which ended in interception, and the Tigers turned it into a touchdown. Giles throwing to the outside. It's complete. Bowers dives in and makes the tackle, making the catch Elijah Gooden Dotton, the freshman from Cypress Ridge. They'll move it back to the 23. It's a two-yard loss on the play. We apologize, folks. I guess they don't have anybody doing live stats today, Jeff. I did not know that. There's no live stats? I would have kept my own had I known, but it doesn't look like we have anybody doing stats. Maybe that's, you know, maybe something was scheduled and nobody showed up, but we'll do our best to get those stats to you. And it's a shame because the Tigers are having an epic game already. Well, you can almost plug in any video game number if you've played uh, a Madden or whatever you, whatever video games the kids play these days. And, it, man, first quarter, just a romp. And there's your guy, Elijah Bogar, says, how do you do to Kyle Corton in the backfield? Another loss back to the 21. You know, and I was, you were there. We were talking to Coach Cook. I said, I have a hard time watching your defense sometimes because he is so dynamic. Bogar is all over the place. If you watch just him, number 97, watch what he does on defense. He moves all over the field. 
and is so quick laterally that he gets by guys. Well, what's interesting, and we saw a little bit of this last night in the, in the Hillcrest game, when you can manage the offensive line with just three guys up front, it just opens up so much more for your defense, and Boger's sitting on that left end. He's a very hard guy to handle. Third down, rolling is Giles Boger with pressure, flushing him out. Here's the throw, and incomplete right at the marker. Intended for Johnson on the coverage was Edward Gills, the sophomore from New Orleans, and a penalty on the play. Let's see what they got. Yeah, talk with Coach Cook about Bogart. He said, hey, he took a year off during the uh, pandemic to kind of, you know, just kind of get acclimated back to life. And he, when he said when he came back in, he said he was the most focused professional wow. on the team on his defensive side of the football. That is high praise from Coach Cook. Since he's, he's somebody, if you had 10 of them or 11 of them. You, he, he, did, yeah, he did say that, right? He said, I wish I, had, you know, I wish I had a guy like that every year. 10-yard penalty on the hold, so a first down moves the sticks. But here's what was interesting. He said that Boger took a year off from football, but he was still in the classroom. Yeah, I mean, and doing a great job. Yeah. Uh, he's a high-character guy, and it's great to hear and, and see this this. Uh, Tiger team flourish on and off the field. The dive play right up the middle, moving the stick and moving the uh, chains a little bit. Player down slowly. That was the fullback. Kevion Jones Bell. Maybe four yards on the play will bring up a second down and about six. Jones Bell, Christian High had just two carries against Palomar a couple of weeks ago. Didn't have positive yardage. Two carries for negative one. So they gave him three up to the 34. Second and seven. And they're going to take their sweet time, Will the Griffins. They're going to do three yards on a cloud of dust here. Gooden dot into the bottom of the screen. Double tight end set. Actually, no, full house backfield. they got three men in the backfield. Giles dancing around, trying to throw. He'll throw the ball down the field. He's got a man complete to the 25-yard line. There was just one man down the field all the way down to the 24. 42-yard pickup on the play, making the catch Elijah Gooden Dotton. That's going to come back because that's an offensive hold. So all for nothing, Gazal, on that play. Well, is, you're wondering why he was dancing around <laughs> like that. Somebody had hold of one of the defensive linemen, and we'll bring it all back. But a nice play nonetheless. A nice play by Giles and a nice job by uh, Gooden Dotton down the field. Gooden Dotton just runs to the spot. You could you could see after, I don't know, I forget who the defender was, that kind of defender pumped his fist in frustration because they knew somebody had made a mistake. They get the reprieve on the hold, so ball goes back to the 21, second and 20. Watch 97 here, four-man front. So let's see what they do. Boger standing up on the outside, Jeff, number 97. Yeah, I'm telling you, if you're a fan of football and you like those those tough guys, you know, the, can, that can get to a quarterback, he can do it almost every single time. Down the field. He's got a man. This is Gooden Dotton again, oh. and he can't hold on to it. On the coverage there is Kavon Baptiste, the bounce back from San Jose State. Third down and 20 coming up. Nice job. You know, Gooden Dotton, uh, 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 is it? Yeah, Gooden Dotton runs patterns well. You could tell he's a good route runner, Jeff. Great route runner. And I'll tell you what, he was wide open. This is a couple times we've seen him. I mean, he is just in a foot race, perfectly thrown football. Yeah. Just a great pass. Over that right shoulder, just not able to play it. Yeah, straight go down the field. Good coverage, though, by Baptiste. Had good coverage on him, too. Of John W. North High School. It's funny. B Baptiste kind of came to RCC as a safety, but they turned him into more of a corner. I was talking with Coach Kraft about it. He said they like kind of his length and his size. He's pretty athletic coming off that ACL oh. injury. What a great tackle there. Fullback making the uh, carry is uh, KV on Jones Bell. Stopped on the play. So fourth down coming up. Was that, that was Philander Lee, wasn't it? Yeah, Lee. Out of Cajon High School. Cowboys. Who would have thought Cajon High School might not make the playoffs? Oh, they'll make the playoffs. What a great league that is, though. McDaniel and Monica back. John Butcher will punt it away. Bounces at the 40-yard line, and it'll go dead at about the 31. 
So a 48-yard kick, no return. And uh, first down and 10 for the Tigers. Doesn't seem to be any problem for them to move the ball down the field. No, this has been uh, fun so far to watch. If you love offensive football, the uh, Tigers are, are doing what they're supposed to do. Still three minutes left here in the first quarter. They could put up 28 to match their uh, game against Mount San Jacinto two weeks ago. Yeah, and, and we were talking with James Cook, and he was saying, and he's talking about the defense. And he said, listen, we want them to be relentless. I am sure the same message has come from Tom Kraft to the offense, Jeff. Oh, I think something was said. I mean, this has been the best offensive out- output we've seen all season. I wish we had the stats. Like we said, we have some incredible numbers here with just you know 12 minutes to play here in the first quarter 48 yard play a 35 yard play a 97 yard play that's complete to the 36 yard line that's monica making the catch up to the 36 yard line a five yard pickup second and five and looks like they're going to go tempo here jeff monica with a second reception of the day second and five complete to bancole and he's wiped out immediately Good defensive play. That's Colton Guerrero. That's the stud linebacker for uh, Grossmont. Guerrero, a sophomore from Steel Canyon, started his career. Well, started to play two years at Steel Canyon, played his senior year at Lincoln. And when I was talking to Tom Kraft before the game, he was one of the guys that singled out. He said, hey, their middle linebacker is pretty good. Here's a free play right here, Gazal. Second and seven, throwing for Kajaya Holloway. And Holloway reels it in inside the 30. One-on-one coverage down the field between Holloway and Jalen Wilson, and Holloway catches the ball at the 26-yard line. So a 39-yard strike, moving the sticks on, or moving the moving the sticks on the free play. I love it, and I'll tell you, the quarterback there just said, "Hey, we're going to throw it deep." Barton unleashes, just throws it over the top, and it's a, like I said, a jump ball again, perfectly caught. Well, if you're gonna if you're gonna throw a jump ball, you're gonna throw it to Kajaya Holloway. That's the guy. Uh, Holloway, six foot four, <laughs> out of San Jacinto, played for Eric Galliano. So ball to the thirty five yard line. Here's Barton back to throw. He's got time. He's thrown over the middle. He's got a man. Intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Grossmont. That was Jaden Muldown. Muldown, the Orange County kid, the freshman from Brea Olinda, and the touchback for Grossmont. Nice play on defense there. Yeah, great pay, play defensively. This ball just underthrown. I mean, he threw a great a ball just right before this. That's just great defense right there. That's eye on the ball. So Muldown with the pick makes a big play for Grossmont. 138 here in the first quarter. It's almost like we've played a full game already, Jeff. There's been so much action. And Grossmont, again, they'll just try to control the ball here. Yeah, it seems like we should be going home in a minute and 38. The gift to the tailback and not much doing. Well, you got to give them credit. Grossmont trying to get that run established by hook or by crook. And carrying the ball again is Kai L. Kai L. Gordon, out of El Cajon Valley. Gordon ran for 2,600 yards in high school, 26 touchdowns. Had 18 touchdowns as a senior, 2,000-yard seasons. A little bit of a different situation here. Rodiak split out along with James Johnson. Trips to the far side. Giles dancing and down he goes. In comes the blitz. And he goes down at the 13-yard line. So Bogart in on the play, but the man making the play, Taven Anderson out of Beaumont, the freshman linebacker, just came straight down the smokestack, and Giles couldn't handle it. Played for our guy uh, Jeff uh, Steinberg at Beaumont. Yeah, and you watch Anderson. Anderson plays off of Bogart. And he just and fires down there. the inside. Everybody worried about Bogart. He slides right in from that uh, second part of the secondary. Or the first wave of the secondary, I should say. Ticking down to the end of the first quarter. As we do, we'll go down to Pep Fernandez. 
First quarter coming to an end. They'll get one more playoff. Here's the give right up the middle, and it'll go over the 15, back to about the 18 before he's pushed back. They'll mark it to the 17-yard line. That'll be the final play here in the first quarter. 21 nothing Tigers after 15 minutes. Let's kick it down to the third member of our broadcast team, the great Pep Fernandez on the sideline. <laughs> Ah, uh, you are too kind, Gazal. But you know who's having a great game is that defensive front right now for RCC. I know you've been talking a lot about Boger. You also mentioned my guy, P.J. Lee, from Cajon High School. I actually talked to him before a kickoff, and he's been getting a lot more snaps, a lot more playing time, and you can see why. He had a sack on that previous series. I think P.J. Lee, along with his whole defensive front, really growing up this season. And this defense might be a work in progress, but, guys, they're already really good. I just feel like they keep trending in that positive direction. Back to you guys. 21 nothing here. We'll flip the field. It'll be fourth down coming up. And we'll get another look at John Butcher. Butcher has been kind of the MVP for the Griffins tonight. The freshman out of Grossmont High School, averaging 34 yards a kick on the year, has put six inside the 20. Did actually put one, uh, uh, put one inside the 20 yet tonight. So who, who would win in a battle, a Griffin or a Tiger? That's always my... That's a very good question because the Griffin's got the, fl the flight ability. And, and it's magical, isn't it? It's got to yeah. have some sort of uh, powers if it can fly. Big talent, maybe? The Griffin is like, it's eagle and what? somebody yep. so officially they mark it to the 14 so a 68 yard punt for that's, butcher i thought that's exactly what happened maybe you and i have younger eyes we we, we watch a lot of football jeff <laughs> we're, we're out here every week calling games so we see the little nuances four-man front for the griffins and you know tom Kraft was very complimentary of the front seven for uh for grossmont thought they were very well played he said don't let the record fool you So that'll be on RCC. Mason Mitchell, the defensive coordinator for Grossmont. Head coach, Michael Jordan. I thought you were going to say Scotty Pippen was his... Uh... I'm, I'm more of a Horace Grant guy. We're talking Bulls. Actually, to be honest with you, I'm more of a, of a Reggie Theus guy for the Bulls, the pre-Jordan Bulls. Oh, those are the good days. They Ball backed up to the nine. Throwing the ball down the field. Complete to Espadrone at the 40, the 39 yard line. 30 yard pickup, Nori and Espadrone on the coverage. Time on Palafay. So to the 39 yard line, 30 yard pickup. And, you know, I was going to mention this before the interception, but Barton has looked mar remarkably efficient tonight. Look at the roll. He sees the man down the field, releases the football, and then Espadron makes a nice play, kind of stops and goes back to get the football. He's the eighth receiver to catch a football today. I thought we would have heard Espadron a lot earlier because he is so dangerous. Let's see if they continue to go to him, if they go one-on-one -on -one coverage. First and 10 from the 39. Tigers two by two underneath to Strong. And Strong up over the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Flag on the play. That's Colton Guerrero making the tackle for the Griffins. And he's everywhere. Uh, Colton Guerrero last week or two weeks ago, Jeff, made 18 tackles, 15 of those solo. We often make the joke about, you know, uh, Forrest Whitaker's character Jefferson and Ridgemont High. Yes. That's a Jefferson type of game. 18 tackles, 15 solos for Colton Guerrero. That's a season for some guys. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a cool first name, Colton. I'd love to see some some uh, tight end utilized here. We've we have uh, eighty five Connor May. 
He was doing some battle in the backfield with the, the safety at the end of that play as he comes out of the game. So a 15-yard penalty marked off, wiped the playoff, and it'll go back to the 24-yard line. Yeah, utilize that tight end, Coach. I want to see him get another guy catching footballs. Well, they got four receivers in the formation. Here's the play action, the, the jailbreak, and they got a man. They got Holloway down the field, and Holloway makes the catch at about the 40-yard line, and he's tackled at about the 35, actually forced out of bounds. The man on the coverage was Jalen Wilson. Second time he has beat Wilson. So down at the 37-yard line, the play will go 37 yards. You have, like we said, a receiver that's 6'4 and can run like a gazelle. Just throw it ahead of him and go get it. So Halloween has to kind of slow up a little bit, but he still makes the catch, and then Wilson drags him down at the 37. It's actually a 39-yard completion, and now here's Strong up the middle, puts his shoulder down, pounds down at about the 22-yard line, 15 more yards for Bryce Strong. He's got a little pep to his step. You know, I wonder, I mean, obviously we talked about not having the live stats. I wonder if Cliff knows about that. I'm sure he assigned somebody. Maybe he'll show up at halftime. We can make up our own for the first half. First and 10 from the 22. And here's Strong running to the inside. He's all the way down inside the five. He'll stumble into the end zone for the touchdown. 22-yard touchdown run for Bryce Strong. Touchdown, Tigers. Huge block to spring him by Simon Mayawa. Mayawa cleared this hole, and running right through it was Bryce Strong. Touchdown, Tigers, 27-0. Did you say Mayawa or old Mayawa? Mayawa. Wow, what a great run there by Strong. He took a shot. They hit him the wrong way, though. You don't hit him going forward. You hit him, supposed to hit him backwards. Mayawa out of Santa Margarita had the huge block on the play and a flag on that play. He was actually supposed to go play at New Mexico State, kind of fell in their lap, according to Tom Kraft. Things didn't work out with the New Mexico. There was issues with the program over there, and he ended up uh, wanting to stay in Southern California, ended up here with uh, RCC. I think uh, RCC would probably beat those guys. <laughs> you know, I was talking with somebody this week. I was talking with Ken Batdorf over at Nord Vista, and he was a firm believer in this. He said, I watch all these RCC games on Riverside TV, and he said, I think they could beat some legit D1 schools. And he was serious about it. He said, I'll put them against Redlands. I'll put them against any D2 school. And he says, there's some teams in the big sky that they could get. The PAT. Ah, Panikowski puts it through. I don't want to. I don't want to talk bad about the Big Sky because you know who plays That's in the Big Sky. Chavez. Our friend Ricardo Chavez. Here's another look. Big play with Kajaya Holloway. How about this? He didn't even play wide receiver till a year ago. Like hey. Dante Hicks and Clerks, he wasn't even supposed to be here today. He was a quarterback for God's sake. He, he was, was going to be the heir apparent to DTR. And this is the touchdown run by Strong. Look at the strength. Oh no, that's the 15 yard run. We're going to have the touchdown run coming up next. Watch the block by number 60. Look at that hole he clears, and then right through is strong. Watch the physicality here. Boom, and stumbles forward. Touchdown. He has three touchdowns so far. Four on the day between he and Jesse Campbell. Somebody else, you got to give. You got to give someone else a little love. The hat trick for Bryce Strong. Sophomore out of Colony High in Ontario. Another local guy. Emphasizing on the local reach that Tom Kraft has with his recruiting. He'll go out into Corona to get a guy. He'll go to Ontario to get a guy. A bunch of guys from Riverside, San Bernardino, Colton, Fontana, Mars, Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> they may not punt. The guy I feel bad for that is Nathaniel Wallace Dilling, St. Francis de Sales in Columbus, Ohio. May not see the field today. 28 nothing already here. 12:37 in the second quarter. Janikowski has boomed it out of the end zone each kickoff that he's done. Let's see if he can do it again. And they're going to call a fair catch. Wow. Fair catch by Gooden Dutton. It'll come out to the 25. We'll throw it down to Pep on the sideline. 
Hey, Gazal, I heard you guys just a moment ago talking about how great the offensive line was on that drive, springing Bryce Strong to his third touchdown of the game. When Bryce Strong came off the field, it was business as usual. A couple high fives, and he sat right down. But you know who celebrated the most was the offensive line. They know when it's been a job well done when Bryce gets into the end zone. They were enjoying that last uh, touchdown they just scored to make it 28 zip his third of the day. Guys, back to you. You know, Jeff, we know. I mean, we talked to enough coaches. It all starts with the big boys up front on offense and on defense. First and ten. Giles dancing, rolling. He'll keep it up over the 35. They'll mark him out right at the 36-yard line, 11-yard pickup, and move the sticks. I think if you're Coach Kraft and Coach Cook, I think you're okay with this because you watch. He had all the time in the world, but nothing there. The secondary really did their job. Yeah, Tony Alima had a shot at him. Aho Makaafi, the freshman from the Pacific Northwest, had a shot at him. But nice job. You know, you've got to give Giles credit at a certain point. He has run for 88 yards on the season. First and 10 from the 36. That might be the only thing they get tonight, the way this uh, Tigers team is playing. Rodi split out to the near side. Here's the throw to shot from Giles, complete. Kenna Kalupe catches the ball at about the 41-yard line. Five-yard pickup, second and five coming up. And again, what's the formula? Get the ball out of your hand quickly. Quick, as fast as you can, because those big guys on the end. Jacoba Fuamatu on the coverage, the freshman from Orange County. Played at Modern Day High School for Rollo, Bruce Rollinson in his final season. Retired. How about Modern Day going down to Bosco yesterday? Jason Negro. And they got blanked. 28 nothing. Second and six. Kalupe looking for him. Now in comes Boger. They'll finally dump it off to the safety valve. And a, a streak of Tigers shows up. About a three-yard pickup on the play. Third down and three coming up. I believe you used that correctly. A streak? What else could it be called? A streak or an ambush. An ambush. That, but no, streak sounds much cooler. Yeah. Another look at it here. Look at Bogar with the pressure, stepping up his Giles. He's cognizant of Bogar, but he's got to deal with Tupo. And then a little ping pong there, or a little pinball, right? Yeah, like playing caroms. Did you ever play caroms as a kid when you go to the park and you play? It's like on a checkerboard. And you yeah, yeah, no, I played, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You get them in the nets in the corner? Third and two. Quarterback sneak. I don't think he got it. Stopped at the 45, needed to get to the 46. So fourth and one, let's see what they do here. Well, Michael Jordan opt to bring the punt team out. John Butcher has been their MVP so far. Yeah, was that, the, was that a version of the tush push now? Oh, that please stop. Yeah. The brotherly shove? The brotherly shove. That's right. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, we've got the Eagles 5-0. and we got Philadelphia in the NLCS. So the Philadelphia fan base has been unsuffer- insufferable now. Well, if they if they don't win though, they they like they'll kill you. Flag on the play. Let's see. The Tigers definitely move, but were they drawn? That's the question. They're going to call offsides. On and a first down. Hey, defense, yeah. Good boxing. And see, we were talking with James Cook about it from the discipline standpoint, and this is what drives coaches crazy. Now, you feel the Tigers are more disciplined than they were last year, right? I, mean, I think they're more disciplined than the teams we've seen the last 10 years oh, here. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, just because, and, and I think C- Coach Cook agreed with me. He goes, yeah. He goes, the problem is they're too nice. And, uh, you know, you used to see RCC getting these personal foul penalties at bad times. This team doesn't do that, but they don't play with the, the angst or anger, as he said. So the ball moves to the 50-yard line to midfield. Giles looking down the field. Incomplete. Sweeney on the coverage for RCC. Elijah Gooden Dotton. We already talked about how good a root runner he is. He's the intended receiver in the formation. Second and ten with 9.06 to play in the second quarter. And he that had painted the, Tiger Visage. And he had the, the foot race, as you saw, just a bit overthrown there. Yeah, Quaylen McQueen down the field as well. Let's look at the Tigers here. Yeah, it's dude. They're they're in a. It looks like they're in a three three five here. Five defense about kind of a nickel. I guess you call it a nickel, right? Yeah, but yeah, they are. They're just putting the big boys up front here. Second and ten, thrown to the outside. It's complete. That's Trayton Ned that 
Sherman Oaks Notre Dame product, and he'll get up to about the 45-yard line, about a five-yard pickup. Oh, there's a flag after the play here, and I think they're going to call Ooh, it. They're going to tack on some yardage here. So 8.52 to play in the second quarter, 28 nothing. The Tigers on a su- uh, Saturday afternoon, college football Saturday here in the city of Riverside. Had a big uh, day of high school football yesterday. Uh, maybe that there it is right there, the little shove after the play. But was he was it precipitated? Let's see what happened. Was it provoked? Maybe they'll pull it off here. Let's see. It's one you just wave off. Hey, you're down. Yep, twenty eight. Having a discussion on the field. And referee's taking a little while. Maybe they're a little hot. Maybe Michael they're... Jordan out on the out on the field. He's the head coach of Grossmont, seventeenth year. Doesn't look too happy with what he's being told. Now they said there was a a kick. Did you see it? An unsportsmanlike con that was a kick. So he'll move the ball back to the forty one yard line of Grossmont. Have you ever tripped anybody on purpose? Not on purpose. Not on purpose. purpose. I've tripped some people by accident, yeah. I think that would be a horrible, horrible thing to do if you trip somebody. Because if you go down, it hurts. I'm tripping. Third and 19. Out of the backfield, Gooden Dutton. And he's tackled immediately at about the 46-yard line. Taven Anderson makes the tackle. So five-yard pickup on the play, fourth down. And we'll see John Butcher. Another look at it. Gooden Dotton out of the backfield. He's kind of their playmaker. And the defense has really stood up here against Grossmont, Jeff. Oh, they've not allowed the Griffins to do very much at all. I think that week off gave them a little, uh, that little spark that uh, Coach Cook wanted. So McDaniel back, along with Will Bond, and McDaniel catches the ball at about the 10. Goes through one hit. He's up to the 25-yard line. So 34-yard kick and about a 15-yard return, and first and 10 from the 25 for the Tigers. Check that 44-yard kick and a 15, 16-yard return. So first and 10 RCC, 7.28 to play in the second quarter. Here comes Jordan Barton. When I talk with Coach Kraft on Thursday, it's interesting because he'd come off the game um, against Mount San Jacinto where he'd just gone 13-24. He wanted Barton to be more efficient. Man, he's been efficient today. Here's the completion to Demarion Young, close to the 30-yard line, so about a three-yard pickup there. Second down, and they'll go tempo. To Young with his third reception. I'm wondering, I know he's had the interception, but I believe Barton may only have one incompletion today, aside from the interception. So talk about efficiency. And they did look good in that first quarter against San Jacinto. It just, they kind of, like I said, hit a wall. I don't know if it was uh, confidence and you just kind of give up, but you can't, good teams can't give up. Play action, Barton throwing, complete to Monica. Monica accelerating to the 40. Still on his feet at the 45-yard line. Chris Akeridge ra- wrapped him up and needed some help down the field. He got all the way down to the 45-yard line. 15-yard pickup on the play. Monica, about 10 of those yards came after the catch. And Monica, what do they call it? The yak. Yards after the contact. And he's, you know, he managed to stay in bounds. I really think that Grossmont thought he was out of bounds. From Smackover, Arkansas, has played at Gila River Community College and Fort Scott Community College. Second down play. That's incomplete. Third down coming up. Acreage on the coverage. The freshman out of Mount Miguel High in San Diego. Acreage and his sister were profiled in a magazine when they were grade schoolers. His younger sister, Solangeli, whose nickname is Coco, she plays women's basketball for Alabama State. Starting her freshman year this year. She'll play in about a month, right? They're getting That's underway. That's awesome. 
Second and ten from the forty-five. Where's he from? Smack. Sm- uh, sp- no, that's a uh, okay. Mark. Ma- that's a uh, uh, Anchorage is from San San Diego. The end around to Demarion Young. Here comes the flag, but Young still on his feet. Young dancing. He's to the open field. He's got a blocker waiting for him. He's into the end zone for the touchdown. 45-yard run by Demarion Young, but I got a feeling it's all coming back. Look, our our camera crew is ready for that cannon. Holding will bring it back. Young out of Corona Centennial. How about the Huskies? Putting it on Vista Murrieta yesterday. He took care of uh, Coley Candale. Most handsome coach in football. So two penalties on the play, the block below the waist and the hold. They'll decline the block below the waist and take the hold. Although I thought block below the waist is a longer penalty. The hold is 10. I think the block below the waist would be 15. So Barton calling his team together while the officials sort it out. Here's the run. Too bad for Demarion Young. He got all the way to Pater. Now they're discussing it. I think I want to see if you if let's see if RCC will go quick tempo here. I wonder if Barton. He's talking to every one of his linemen. I wonder if they're going to get a play here. Yeah, they've been, they've been going it. tempo all game, and what? I think uh, I think Barton is better when they're going tempo. Jeff. I do too. He's, yeah. it's, I, I love watching him go tempo. Let's see if they go right into a play here, though. So they decline. Yeah, that makes sense. Decline the hold, take the block below the waist. Oh, so the block below the waist was on the defense. Defense, So they're going to wipe everything away. The penalty's offset. Okay, so he he pointed towards Riverside twice the first time. So we'll wipe it all away. It'll be as if it never existed. And we do it again. Like with Senator Geary and Godfather 2. And then uh, <laughs> now it's two by two. Oscar Hammond, the San Diego kid, the freshman out of Patrick Henry High School, split out to the bottom of the screen for RCC, playing against his hometown school. Barton to throw. Barton out of the backfield to Allende Bancole. Bancole puts his shoulder down, muscles up to about midfield. Two Griffins there to meet him. That was Jaheim Mendenhall with some help from Jadon Kayo. Kayo out of Corner Canyon, Utah. He's a Hawaiian kid playing junior college football in Southern California. Great journey for him. Moved to Utah during the pandemic to live with his mom so he could continue to play high school football. You know, Hawaii was severely affected in terms of the pandemic. Third and six coming up. Barton to throw. Underneath, complete to Bancole. Nice tackle. That was Kayo there with a nice tackle up to the 45. Just short of the first down. Needed to get over the 45. Let's see what they do here. They'll go for it, meaning the Tigers. And they're going quick here. Jaden Kayo with the tackle. And Barton will just take it over and get the first down. He'll sneak behind big Calvin Ampudia. Ampudia. The center. You can hear the band coming in. It's homecoming here at RCC today. You know, I stand corrected. They actually moved uh, Nephi Kalamathoni Tuiasopo. He is playing center now out of Norco. And heck, he goes maybe 6'10", 330. So not hard to see why they wouldn't go behind him. First and 10 from the 44. Timeout called by Grossmont with 4.29 to play in the half. 28 nothing Tigers, and it's four more or less been Tiger domination here. Not much the Griffins have been able to do on the offensive side, and that was the focus for the Tigers. They didn't feel the defense played very well against Matt Sanicino. And I would have to agree with uh, Coach Hook. I didn't think they played very well uh, after that first quarter. I think they gave up, gave up a lot and just kind of r- relied on their, you know, their, their big cushion. But they gave up a lot of plays, a lot of running plays, and we haven't seen that today at all. You know, the two games, they gave up 40 in the opener at Long Beach on the road, and they gave up 44 against Grossmont. They only gave up 17 points, but I guess coming off that Grossmont game, they really thought they would be dialed in against Mount San Jacinto, and they were not. They weren't. I mean, that's it was, it was an understatement. Great first quarter, but got to play a whole game. Nice stadium, though, at the Menifee. Mount San Jacinto out there. They were serving beer. 
they had they had a pizza oven, a brick pizza oven out there that they like brought in. Well, you should tell Cliff Dockerman all this stuff because he needs <sighs> ideas for here for RCC. Well, I'm telling you, they bring in some food trucks down here to the Wheelock Stadium. From the 44, it's a first down for RCC. Barton's got time. He'll throw the ball. Complete to Modica. Modica dancing, breaks one tackle, and then pulled down inside the 30. Colton Guerrero makes the tackle for the Griffins. 15-yard pickup on the pass and run. To Monica with his third reception as well here in the first half. He's really spreading. Well, here's your guy. Here's Connor May checking in the freshman out of Damian High Thank from you. Laverne, California. Let's use him. Moved to Laverne as a 10th grader. You know where he lived before he lived in Laverne? I have no idea. Surely. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> R.I.P. both uh, Cindy, well, actually, uh, Cindy Williams and Penny Marshall. They are both no longer with us. First and 10 from the 29. Shlemiel, Shlemazel. Complete and a touchdown. The kid out of San Diego scores against his hometown team. That's Omar Hammond out of Patrick Henry High School. Give him liberty and give him a touchdown. 29-yard completion from Barton to Hammond. All right, I don't hear that. Well, did you hear? I didn't hear the cannon. Oh, you with, with Omar? If he's from Patrick Henry High, we got to hear the cannon. Come on, cannon. So Omar Hammond at 3.43 of the second quarter catches the touchdown. Here's Panikowski to kick it away or kick the PAT. Kick is up and good. You know what? They didn't do the can, I bet, because the, the band is right oh, in front the band. of them. You don't want to get hit with, some, with, with a cannonball. Let's put Clarence out of the band and steal all his good ideas. Remember when Eddie Murphy played the fifth Beatle Clarence and they played the recording? There were two sketches with the fifth Beatle because Phil Hartman also played the fifth Beatle. Remember Al Goldman wrote yes. the unauthorized biography and they lampooned him as well. 3.43 to play. Three, uh, 35 nothing Tigers. It's been uh, pretty dominant for the offense here. Jordan Barton has been very efficient here in the first half. You mentioned he's also spreading the wealth. Yeah, he's, I mean, I, I, I unofficially, I think I have him for nine receivers here in the first wow. half. Wow. Nine different guys catching the football. He's like Ebenezer Scrooge after the ghosts have visited him. So generous, giving everybody everything. He had nine different receivers have caught the ball today. Whenever you can get... Whenever you can get uh, Christmas Carol. Whenever you get Dickens into a football game, you always do it, Jeff. <laughs> Broadcasting 102. 3.43 to play. Panikowski, the ball falls down off the tee. The Griffin's not in any kind of laughing mood right now, though. They want to get back into this one. Elijah, uh, Elijah Gooden, Dotton, debt back deep, along with Carlos Jimenez. Panikowski. Booms it away. Oh, they'll get a chance to return. Here's Jimenez from the six. Jimenez angling to the left side. Jimenez got some space in the middle of the field, and down he goes. Making the tackle was Hajani Washington. He's a San Jack kid. Fear the Jack. Fear the Jack. I want to, you know, they have a, I remember the, the, the tees being a lot different looking when you and I were little. Remember they just had the orange tee? Yeah. Look at it. I'm watching. The, the, Remember when you were a kid, you'd buy a football. It would come with a tee. With a tee, always. And it would be on the tee when you bought the football. Yeah, that was cool. From the 30, first and 10. It looks like a high-tech, a new high-tech tee there. First man through, bulling forward, up to about the 33-yard line for San Jacinto. That's the fullback, Kathion Jones-Bell. Different quarterback in. Trevor Youngman in. He is the sophomore from San Pasqual. Played last year at Moore Park College. Actually got into the game against Palomar a couple of weeks ago. Six for eight, 54 yards and a touchdown. Any relation to Henny? Name spelled differently. Name spelled oh, with a J. Darn. But take my wife, please. I take my everywhere. I take my wife everywhere, but she finds her way home. <laughs> She's, honey, I want to go somewhere I've never been before. I said, try the kitchen. You can't say that now. That's Henny Youngman from the 40s. Second and six from the 34. Throw it over the middle. Nice little screen set up, but he couldn't hold it. Intended receiver was the fullback, Kavion Jones-Bell. Third down. 
Hey, like you just said, anytime you can get Dickens in, if you can get Henny Youngman in. Of course, in, the, in the king of the one-liners. <laughs> I had a professor in college that had, kind of bore resemblance to Henny Youngman, so he would deliver Henny Youngman's lines, and it was pretty funny. Oh, that's great. Third and six from the 34. Festival of Lights, annual switch-on ceremony, November 18th. You'll be there. I'm always there. The week before Thanksgiving this year. Youngman throwing it to the outside. He had a man down the field incomplete, intended for Elijah Gooden Dotton. Did you see who the lineup is for the Festival of Lights? I did, I did not. I did not. Mark McGrath. Mark McGrath is going to be there. Uh, who is, there's someone else that was uh, some big name. There was. Let me get the lineup here. Every morning, right? Every morning, he was the Sugar Ray guy. Yeah. McGrath. Uh, all, he, wasn't he? He was also an anchor for like extra for a little bit, right? He was. He'd always hold. That's how I learned. I watched Mark McGrath. He'd hold his pinky when he would talk. That's how I, I, I've learned from Mark McGrath, but I've s- since got rid of it. John Butcher to kick it away. Will Bond back deep along with McDaniel. And Bond, Will Bond, makes the catch at the 22-yard line. So a 44-yard kick, no return. First and 10. Tigers will have 240 to play. Well, that's a, that's a coup. The City Riverside landed Mark McGrath. So they're doing it the week before. Do you know why? No, I do not. <laughs> I did not know that. Riverside, I'm looking up. We have, there's a big lineup here. 35 nothing here in the first half with two minutes and 40 seconds to play. And you know they will try to score here because you know, Tom Kraft, when I spoke with him, said our efficiency, we need to be a little bit more efficient on offense. We want the depth to improve. We want to keep guys fresh. We've had a little drop-off, and he doesn't want that drop-off. Barton's still in there. He'll fling it to the outside. It's complete to the 25. And now in the open field, this is Espadrone. They're not going to catch him. Espadrone at the 30 makes a nice move to the inside. Nice move back to the outside. He loses the football. Lost the football. Oh, my. They stripped it away from him. But it went out of bounds. He's going to go all the way to the one-yard line, 77-yard play. So Espadrone lost the football, but it bounced out of bounds at the one. 77-yard play. And here's a nice bit of work by Espadrone late in the play because Palafay's got an angle on him, makes a nice little move, little toe tap there, waits for Holloway to muster some resistance, but then he slows down. So from behind, the ball's able to be punched out, making the play from behind Jalen Wilson for Grossmont, but they couldn't come up with it. It rolled out of bounds at the one. First and goal. Barton into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown Jordan Barton who finishes it off. So Barton with a one-yard run, 41 nothing here as we come towards the end of the first half. Panikowski for the PAT. So by the way, 42 nothing also, I believe, was the final of the Lincoln-Jefferson rivalry game in fast times at Ridgemont, or Lincoln-Ridgemont rivalry game where Jefferson made all those plays. Panikowski pumps it through and it's 42 to nothing here with 202 to play in the first half. Well, I mean, Tom Kraft wanted more efficiency from his offense. I would say that he got it. Uh, yeah, I think he probably could put up a few more here in the first half. We got to talk about the the lineup here. We I'm sorry. This is football and Mark McGrath like you said Skip Martin of the da- the lead vocalist of the Daz band. What? Who? Skip Martin. He also was the singer of Cool in the Gang. After oh, JT Cool? No, he yeah. wasn't. No, he well, he was after he quit, though. Remember? No, that's not real. Okay, and then you have Jason Sheff, the lead vocalist of Chicago. You have Wally Palmer, the lead singer of the Romantics. No, well, I'm walking in my sleep. <laughs> Elliot Lori, the Lord, the lead singer of Looking Glass, and here's my favorite, Tommy Two Tone, and. I'm too old now to do the fingers, but I can still say eight six seven five three zero nine. Remember in junior high when you could do it with the yes, thing? I can't do it anymore. Can't, yeah. I can't do it anymore. And then Dean of Jan and Dean. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, so a pretty good lineup. That's huge. You remember remember uh, Pep Fernandez almost got in a fist fight with uh, Kenny Loggins at one of the Festival of Lights. He's all right. Don't have to worry about him. <laughs> Here's Jimenez bringing it out from the two. Oh! Oh, my! Wow. Huge hit. Jimenez goes down, delivering the blow. Andre Branch out of Levine, Arizona. Making the special teams play. How do you do? Wow. I think we I think the whole stadium this is the hit of the day. I mean, he's he's running down full speed. Uh, it was the jump that got it for me. He had to jump up a little bit to make the tackle, but that wasn't a he, as huge a hit as it looked live when they slowed it down. First and ten from the ten. Would you pay to see Pep Fernandez fight Kenny Loggins in a cage a cage battle? I probably would. I mean, I'm a horrible human being. I don't want anybody to fight, though. I do. I want to see Pep Fernandez because he had needs revenge on Kenny Loggins. Youngman, right up the middle. And tackled. Getting up to about the 10-yard line, making the play for RCC is Marcus Jones. So I found out why Marcus Jones dyed his hair. Why? He's having a kid in January. It's for his, for his. Uh, I don't know if it's well, son so or is, daughter. Is it blue or pink? It's blue. Well, blue. I guess oh, it's so going to be a son. Yeah, you're right. You are correct. His dad posted that in one of the live chats. So I wanted to shout out Marcus Jones. Congratulations on the addition to your family. Mr. Jones, congratulations on your grandson. Oh, fla- Flailing Duck and Bowers can't quite come up with it. Intended receiver was Trayton Ned, but I believe he was hit. He must have been hit as he released that. That looked like something from Duck Hunt. The only question was, was it Huey, Dewey, or Louie? <laughs> Remember? Remember yeah. Huey, Dewey, and Louie? Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge Let's McDuck. see if he gets hit here. No, he just uh, didn't get hit. Dante yeah. Bowers nearly picked that one off. You had DuckTales, and then you had... Uh, oh, wow, penalty, so they moved it up to the 22. Oh. First down. Scrooge McDuck. They're all coming out today. It's 42 nothing, Jeff, you know? So we, what we get paid to do in another Wait, flag. It's not the fourth quarter or sec, uh, second half yet? It is not the second half yet. Uh-huh. So a reminder, this Festival of Light switch. That's a Saturday they're doing it. Yeah, I'll be there. I, get, I love doing it. We'll be there. Pep Fernandez and I will be With there. With a cast of thousands. you got to interview all those people. There's like 100,000 people downtown. I'll write you some questions for like Mark McGrath and stuff. I'll ask, so you can ask him. Uh, I'm going to see if I can put uh, Pep in a, in a situation where he's fighting Mark, Mark McGrath. No, it's always fun. Well, no, Kenny Loggins would be a fairer fight, I think, with Pep, because I think they're about the same size. Kenny Loggins is six six. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Look it up. Wow. Six six. Kenny Loggins. He's a tall drink of water. But does he box out? No. Ball back to the seventeen, a first down and fifteen after the penalty. Incomplete and now they're gonna call a penalty on the Tigers. I'm sorry, he's six four. Still taller than Pep. Pep's only like five four. Landon Drabram out of Rancho Verde on the coverage. He's actually listed on the roster as a quarterback, playing a little defensive back for James Cook. So now the officials uh, kind of inserting themselves into this one. Another penalty on the Tigers to move it up here with a minute 11 to play in the first half. Thanks for joining us. 42 nothing RCC over Grossmont. Youngman, the quarterback, looking to throw. He's got some time. Throwing it down the field, incomplete. The intended receiver was Trayton Ned, and another flag comes in. So they'll call defensive holding on the play. We'll move it up again. Well, I mean, listen, I know people are frustrated, but the fact is, if it's a penalty, it's a penalty, right? you got to call The it. score and the situation should not matter if you break the rules. First and 10 from the 37. Good and dotted in motion. Here's the pressure coming. The blitz. Throwing it down the field, and nice play intended for Elijah Gooden Dotton on the coverage. Edward Guilds for RCC, incomplete, second and ten coming up. 
Well, he's been the target for the Griffins. He just has been bombarded by, what do we call them? Uh, what, were the, what were the Tigers? You could uh, a, a group, streak. A streak. It's much better than a. What was the other one you said? Uh, an ambush. An ambush. An ambush. An ambush. Much better than an ambush. Second and ten. Ned in motion. Setting up the screen. Screen play to Kyle Gordon. Gordon over the 40. Stop there. About a six yard pickup on the play. Sweeney making the tackle. Got some help. Bogar was around the ball as well. Clock stops. Some substitutions on defense. First string defense coming back in. Bradbury coming in. Tony Alima coming in. Leo Tupo coming back in. Our friend Marcus Jones back into the game. Full line change for James Cook. Clock continues to move here on third down for Grossmont. Elijah Gutendotten in motion. Here comes the pressure from Bogar, stepping up his young man, running for his life. Throws to the outside. He was open, but under duress, couldn't quite set his feet to throw it. Incomplete fourth down coming up with 12 seconds to play in the first half. This defense is really focused. Just watching their, their body contact or their, their motions here, they're really dialed in today. So fourth down and three for the Griffins. Not much doing here in the first half. How many yards do you have him for? We don't have any yards. Oh, that's right. that's right. Here's the completion to Trayton Ned, and he's pushed out of bounds. Has the first down just inside of midfield. Yeah, making the play for RCC is Landon Dabram. So six seconds to play here in the first half. They're going to tack it on, a flag on the play. They're going to tack on some after the play. That'll be a 15-yarder. Yeah. So you're going to mark it off from the 49, which was the end of the play. It'll go all the way down to just outside the 35. So what do you do here, Jeff? Do you bring on La Lucho Legador and try the 53-yard field goal? So first and 10, they'll probably take a shot at the end zone here. Youngman back, stepping up. He's going to launch it into the corner. Double coverage, nearly a nice interception by Guilds, and that's the end of the first half. 42 to nothing, pretty dominant first half for the Tigers, Jeff. Yeah, pretty dominant. I say very dominant. This defense was dialed in. You can talk about that offense all you want. We know they're going to put up points, but this defense putting up a, a donut on this Griffin uh, offense, pretty impressive. Yeah, donut in the first half, 42 nothing here, and... Obviously efficient as well on the offensive side. Pep Fernandez down on the sideline. We'll throw it down to Pep. Hey, guys. Yeah, the RCC Cannon obviously firing off a lot in the first half. And this is the guy who makes it happen, Otto Salem, a.k.a. the Cannon guy. And, Otto, um, we got the Cannon behind us, and I want you to give us a little tour and, and show it off real quick. But how did you get involved with RCC football? Why the Cannon? Well, I was born and raised in Riverside, and I graduated from RCC. And my daughter, Rochelle Fawcett, she's the cheer director here, and they wanted something to kind of – add to their program here so they asked, she asked me well dad can we have a cannon like the the four-year colleges do so i made this by hand and uh this is the second generation of the all right little technical difficulty downstairs here with pep Fernandez and the Cannon Man uh, for the interview at the half. 42 nothing. The Tigers shooting off some of their own cannons here. Uh, touchdowns for Strong. Actually, Strong has three touchdowns. 
Campbell has a touchdown. Hammond has a touchdown, and Barton has a touchdown in the first half. So 42 nothing, Riverside against, well, not Mon- it's Grossmont, not Mount San Jacinto. And 42 nothing at the half. Back with the second half football. So a little bit of an extended halftime today because it's homecoming. But Jeff and I, I assure you, we'll be back. 42 nothing RCC. Back with more college football. College football Saturday in the city of Riverside. We're back after this. The City of Riverside Public Works Department provides high-quality trash and recycling services for our customers. Our convenient curbside trash collection services help promote a clean and healthy Riverside. But what do you do when you have items too big or heavy for your can? That's where our bulky item pickup service can help. Before you call for help with your bulky items, be aware that not all items are acceptable for our free curbside service. Furniture, tree trimmings that are properly bundled and no longer than 36 inches, water heaters, and other non-hazardous materials are fine for curbside pickup. Appliances containing freons such as refrigerators, freezers, and room air conditioners may also be picked up curbside by separate appointment. Unacceptable items include hazardous waste, antifreeze, paints, filters, and tires. We also cannot pick up electronic waste such as computer monitors and televisions, or fluorescent bulbs and household batteries. Construction or demolition materials such as scrap wood, metal, concrete, doors, and drywall are also not accepted. These items may be dropped off in person for no cost at the Agua Mansa Transfer Station or at one of our Clean Up Riverside events. For more information and the current schedule for these drop-off events, please visit riversideca.gov slash cleanupriverside or call 951-826-5311, your one-stop shop for city services. To schedule a bulky item pickup, first call your service provider for an appointment. On the day of your appointment, please make sure that your items are curbside by 5.30 a.m. You may have up to five items picked up at each service call. If you have an appliance containing Freon, please call the Appliance Recycling Center of America at 1-800-654-2722 for your free pickup appointment. RPU customers may even qualify for a rebate. Visit RiversidePublicUtilities.com for information on current residential rebate programs. To find out more about the City of Riverside Trash Services or our Clean Up Riverside events, visit the Public Works website at riversideca.gov slash publicworks. The Riverside Libraries have new hours and are now open on Sundays. Now you'll have more time to explore, study, and learn about the things that matter to you the most. The new hours for Arlington, Arlanza, Marcy, La Sierra, Orange Terrace, Eastside, and Casablanca Libraries are Tuesday to Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., while the downtown main library is open Tuesday to Thursday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Friday to Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. To find out more information about the new hours along with events and programs at the library nearest to you, visit riversideca.gov library. Cheech Marine, and we're inviting you to reserve your spot for the inaugural showing of Cheech Collects. So get your tickets today. We're looking for you. Live Local helps support your favorite businesses with the Shop Riverside Community Card. With over 200 Riverside businesses giving exclusive discounts and offers to community cardholders, there's something for everyone. Participating organizations sell these cards for only $15 each, with $10 going straight back to the organization itself, making the Shop Riverside Community Card a fantastic way to support your favorite local group. For more information about the Shop Riverside Community Card and to find participating businesses, please visit shopriversidenow.com. And don't forget to live local. Shop Riverside. The 
City of Riverside Public Works Department provides high-quality trash and recycling services for our customers. Convenient curbside trash collection services promote a clean and healthy Riverside. To help us provide you with top-quality service, we ask you to follow a few key rules. When placing your trash containers for pickup, please observe the following. Place each container with at least 3 feet separation from each other and at least 6 feet from obstructions such as parked cars, fire hydrants, mailboxes, and trees. Your bin should be placed at the curb no later than 5.30 a.m. on your collection day with the arrow on the lid pointed toward the street to ensure your bins get emptied. If you are experiencing issues with your trash collection or perhaps need a replacement for a damaged trash bin, please contact our customer service call center by using the 311 app or website or by dialing 951-826-5311 to reach one of our customer service representatives. And for more information about trash services, recycling, or bulky items, visit the Public Works website at riversideca.gov slash publicworks. The City of Riverside Public Works Department provides high-quality trash and recycling services for our customers. Convenient curbside trash collection services promote a clean and healthy Riverside. To help us provide you with top-quality service, we ask you to follow a few key rules. There are three different containers for your trash. The blue bin is for recyclables and should only be used for clean recyclable materials such as aluminum cans, cardboard, glass bottles, plastics, and styrofoam. The old brown bin, or new bin with gray lid, is for standard household trash and items not suitable for the other bins, such as animal waste, cactus, palm fronds, soil products, and other waste. The green barrel is for your grass clippings, leaves, weeds, and other plant materials, excluding palm fronds, cactus, and yucca. And please remember not to use any of the containers for heavy construction waste such as concrete. For a complete guide to sorting your trash, please visit riversideca.gov slash public works. Live local. Help support your favorite businesses with the Shop Riverside Community Card. With over 200 Riverside businesses giving exclusive discounts and offers to community cardholders, there's something for everyone. Participating organizations sell these cards for only $15 each, with $10 going straight back to the organization itself, making the Shop Riverside Community Card a fantastic way to support your favorite local group. For more information about the Shop Riverside Community Card and to find participating businesses, please visit shopriversidenow.com. And don't forget to live local. Shop Riverside. The Riverside City Clerk's Office's mission is to enhance community trust and promote equitable public services by providing accessible and efficient legislative support, digital services, and city records to residents, city council, city staff and business partners. We prioritize fiscal responsibility and adapt innovative services to meet the ever-changing needs of the community. We strive to provide residents and businesses with responsive and optimal services. So what does that all mean? Our lean and high-performing team is divided among three important functions, legislative, administrative support, and resident services. 
Besides working as a partner with every city department, the city clerk's office is responsible for many public-facing duties such as our passport acceptance facility. The passport team averages over 6,000 applications processed annually, making us the most widely used and highest performing passport facility in the region. As the keepers of the city's legislative historical record, we are the go-to office for public information requests. On average, our office fulfills over 1,600 requests a year with a three-day average response time, much faster than the 10 days required by state law. Every 10 years after the U.S. Census, the city is required to redraw its ward boundaries to ensure equal representation, and the city clerk's office is an integral part of that effort. In 2022 and 23, we hosted and attended 40 community meetings to gather input from our residents on how we should reshape Riverside. Visit reshaperiverside.com to find out more about this process and to learn about Riverside's new ward boundaries. The city clerk's office is also responsible for municipal elections, as well as the onboarding and swearing-in of all newly elected council members and newly appointed board and commission members. Our office processes all applications for new members and provides annual training for the city's legislative bodies. We provide staff and legislative support for eight of the city's 18 boards and commissions. The city clerk's office also provides agenda processing for city council and committees, as well as the boards and commissions that we support, averaging over 200 agendas processed per year. As the city of Riverside's filing officer, the city clerk is responsible for processing financial disclosure forms for public officials as well as routing contracts for execution. All this work would not be possible without our dedicated team. City clerks truly are the grease that keep the wheels of municipal government turning, and our office is here to support Riverside's residents by ensuring that the decision-making process is transparent to the public, complies with federal, state, and local regulations, and is properly recorded. If you have a public records request, want to know more about the city's legislative history, or have an interest in running for public office, the Riverside City Clerks team is here for you. To find out more, please visit riversideca.gov forward slash city clerk. If you like architecture and history, then don't miss the Doors Open event in Riverside. Many buildings, some which aren't normally open to the public, will open their doors for a look at each one's unique history. Doors Open is free to the public, so visit DoorsOpenRiverside.com to see participating locations. And don't forget to use the hashtag DoorsOpenRiverside to tag us on social media. So today we're standing here in front of the grandmother's mural. Um, and this is a mural done by an artist named Denise Silva, who is a fantastic artist in our community. And we found this mural when she submitted it for another uh, proposal. And when we, uh, the staff saw it, uh, we said this has to go up somewhere in Riverside. So I was a little intimidated <laughs> by the, you know, by the just setting in a concept, but I thought, um, this is something that I really wanted to do and actually I just felt really called to submit it. I had become a grandmother and the way the universe works it sent this quote in my direction and it was when the grandmothers from the four directions speak a new time is coming. So the four directions are represented by the image of the four grandmothers. Tongva, people of the earth. Lisenyo, people of the west. Kahuya, people of the desert and Serrano, people of the pines. When the four grandmothers get together, the folklore is that it's winds of change. And what we have done is so that there is representation all throughout the community is we have a grandmother at four different libraries throughout the community. And so there are all four different locations, but they come together here at the main library. And this main library was a big change for the community from what we had before to what we are now. Our elders, and then being, you know, people that have given us love, that have protected us, have, a, have given us safe spaces. I would, I, love, I would love for the community to feel that because I really, that was an intention that I really put into the work. I really wanted to give 
our indigenous people of the area. I wanted to give them some representation. I wanted to honor them. I wanted to uplift them. They're a reflection of my own ancestors. They're a reflection of my mother and my grandmothers. And I just hope that other people, um, especially indigenous people and people of color, see themselves in, in the art and they feel seen and they feel honored. the dedication ceremony for Mogoni Village, 10 transitional living cottages uh, that will be uh, available for those who are, have recently been homeless, that are either living in a shelter or a halfway home or something along those lines that are ready for the next step, but maybe not exactly fully ready to be 100% independent yet. Well, this is one piece and one of a myriad of solutions that we need to address homelessness in our city. So this housing will support some of the most vulnerable people on our streets. We need more of it and housing at all different levels of support. So we have to start somewhere and this is a really awesome start. The city has a dedicated case manager that will be providing the support for the residents here. And then we also uh, partner with Riverside Housing Development Corporation who will be the, the property manager and they will be making sure that the property is well maintained and making sure everybody's adhering to their lease. We're talking about people that will come in here probably with nothing. And so they have nothing to furnish with. So our agreement with the, the city housing authority is that we would work at furnishing these homes by leveraging Habitat's relationships with some of our local retailers. Habitat for Humanity's model is built around having volunteer work uh, as the labor to keep the costs down for the project. Finally getting to this spot where we are, we are very close to having these, um, these residents move in. It's just so beautiful. I think this has uh, beautified the neighborhood in a way that we were expecting, but to see it come to life like this, it's just a great day. Mulberry Village is a really important, um, I think, demonstration of the types of diverse housing that we need. Um, you know, we need emergency shelter for people who need to get into a bed at night. Uh, we need stable housing to help people get in and stay long term. But we also need what we call transitional housing, which is here. I think we're going to see this as a successful model that we will be able to replicate elsewhere. The, the public is eager to see this type of thing. Our community wants to see uh, the suffering on our streets stop. And this is one way and a big way that we can help that. The City of Riverside is pleased to announce a new innovative downtown parking program called Parking Your Way, designed to offer more convenient, accessible, and up to 90 minutes free parking in aggregate each day. Parking Your Way will utilize a web app where patrons can select 30 minutes of free parking in a metered on-street space and or 60 minutes free in either a public parking lot or public parking garage. Patrons can conveniently pay and extend their parking needs as well through the web app. Parking Your Way will benefit the Riverside community by enhancing the downtown parking experience, leading to improved quality of life and encouraging patrons to frequent downtown establishments. The web app can be used to select free parking options, pay for parking and extended parking sessions right from your smartphone. To illustrate how easy the web app is to use, let's demonstrate how a patron would pay for parking in downtown Riverside once they arrive to their parking destination. First, I locate a QR code in the area I'm parking at. I use the camera on my smartphone to scan the QR code. The QR code redirects my smartphone to a web page where I can then enter in my cell phone number. Once done, click proceed. I'm now able to see the different dates and length of time options in that area. I choose to park my car for about one hour and 30 minutes and I enter in my license plate number. Once completed, I then click continue. The web app now leads me to a payment page where I enter my credit card information. When done, click authorize card. The parking session has now begun. I will receive a text message with the session info. I'm now able to see the parking session, the duration for which I have parked, 
and the payment that I have authorized for. If you frequent downtown Riverside, it may be best to download the web app and create an account so you don't have to enter all the information each time you park. Parking in downtown Riverside just became easier. This concludes the City of Riverside's parking web app demonstration. Thank you so much. Here are the highlights from the first half. How many times did Bryce Strong reach the end zone, you ask? Three. Two touchdown runs and one touchdown reception. 42 nothing at the half between the Tigers and the Griffins at Grossmont. Here's Barton. He finds Strong, and Strong finds his way through the defense to the end zone. The Tigers, much like the 1983 hit by Survivor, they're hanging tough, Jeff, and staying hungry. How about this? 97 yards for Jesse Campbell. Nobody's going to stop. There's almost too much space in front of him. He's almost shocked there's nobody around him. He was great in the first half. I mean, he had three, uh, four um, shots. He got three of them. He was phenomenal in that first half. And now Barton there gets picked off. That's kind of the one misstep in the first half. But the Tiger defense stood up. They stopped the Griffins. Another touchdown run here from Bryce Strong. Look at the end of it here, the strength, the lower body strength in the weight room to get into the end zone. And then here's Omar Hammond. He's a San Diego kid, Patrick Henney High School. Give him liberty or give him pay dirt. Touchdown, Tigers. 42 nothing. Jordan Barton also had a one-yard touchdown run. Uh, to end it here in the first half to make it 42 nothing that came with 202 left uh, taking you around the the uh, other scores in the conference Fullerton over Mesa 27 14 that game was played on Thursday night and then later tonight Sarita uh, I'm sorry Palomar and Saddleback play later tonight in the conference I was confused because last year it was uh, San Antonio was uh, Matt San Antonio was in the league with uh, with the RCC but no more. Yeah, they no changed. Longer. They changed leagues, and maybe you can explain a little bit better because I'm always confused about what how they change the leagues. Is it based on how you've done in yeah, the past? It's, it's strange because Grossmont the last two years played in the American Division, which is the less comp- you know competitive. They don't do the playoffs; they just do bowl games, and somehow. They moved up despite the fact they didn't make the playoffs. So, so, so I don't know how they do it. It's competitive. It's regional. I don't know how they do it. But now you remember last year it was five league games. This year it's seven. So I need to do a little more reading on the SCFA or SCFA to see how they, they coordinate things. But here's what it comes down to. I have a feeling that November 11th game between RCC and Fullerton is probably going to decide the conference. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what, Fullerton... I mean, they have everything going for them. They got a brand new stadium for the first time in school history. They do. They were playing at the high school. I'll tell you what, they, I, I think they would want nothing more than to beat RCC with you know everything going on in their program. Of course, they met last year in the Southern California State Final. The Tigers won that one. 31-17 at San Bernardino Valley College. At least this year, if the Tigers are able to host a playoff game, it'll be right here at Wheelock. So Jimenez back deep, along with Gooden Dotton. Panikowski will kick it away. Start the second half here at Wheelock Stadium. Thanks for joining us on Riverside TV. Uh, it's a live ball. It's going to bounce out of the end zone. Jimenez is going to have to go back and get it, and he will be stopped at about the six. Yeah, that landed right on the one foot line and bounced back instead of going in. What a great kick. For my guy Gabe. He did that on purpose. Just for me. Because, you know, he gave me the heart. After he kicked it, he gave me the heart with his two hands and pointed to me. In my in my dreams, he did. So, yeah, so RCC will start on defense. Here you go. From the six-yard line for Grossmont here in the second half. Rodiak split out to the far side. Gooden dot to the near side. In the near spot, Calupe. Back at quarterback is Giles. Giles gets outside, and he'll finally be upended after about the seven-yard line. Dante Bowers comes up and makes the hit for RCC. About a th- one-yard pickup on the play up to the seven. Second down. Another look at Giles. Gets away from the first uh, would-be tackler. 
Jesse Bradbury was trying to get in on him, and then finally Bowers comes up and makes the play. And those are the kind of plays they need to make, Jeff, on defense. That's what James Cook was talking about. Yeah, the toughness of, of this defense. That's what he wanted in this game. They've had it. Childs to throw, looking for Gooden Dotton a little bit behind him. Jawan Nickerson, Jawan Nixon right there. Nixon's the one. Did you ever see the movie with Anthony uh, Anthony Hopkins playing Richard Nixon? You ever see that one? No. no. Really Is that a good. good one? Third and eight. A very good one. Oliver Stone. Very good one. Can you hear me now? Now I can't. Okay. I'm sorry, I was in a... Uh... No, we had yeah, we had a secondary channel on the headset. So it's, I was, to me, it's fun. It's like air traffic controllers at that point. <laughs> but I can't do two things at once. No, you guess you can. Third down. Giles to throw under pressure. A little bit of a lollipop throw. Bowers trying to play it back like a center fielder. Somebody went in when they should have supposed to go out. It looked like some miscommunication there on the route. Elijah Gooden, Dotton, the intended receiver. Fourth down coming up, and we'll see the MVP, John Butcher. Well, let's see if, if uh, this defense can get to him and get some more points here early on. Here in the well, I mean, they're going to get good field position here. Great field position. but let's... McDaniel and Bond back. Fourth and eight. Butcher's been the most effective Griffin today, the punter. Out of Grossmont High as well as Grossmont College. I believe this is his seventh kick. Flag comes in. I think the play clock may have expired. Or maybe the play clock didn't start. So the back judge threw a flag but picked it up. And now they'll. Oh, they're gonna. They are gonna back them off. Wow. Yeah, coming out of a bye week, just not a good performance right now. If you're Grossman, I know part of it is because the Tigers are playing well. Fourth and twelve. Line drive kick. Bond calls for the fair catch right on that painted Tiger visage at about the 47-yard line. So 43-yard kick and a fair catch, and that's where the Tigers will start it up. Let's see if we're going to see some Brady Jones here in the second half. To... Oh, I'm sure we will at some point. I don't know if we'll see him right now. Oh, maybe we will. Looks like he's coming out on the field, Jeff. I think we're going to get some Brady Jones out of Vista Marietta. So the Tigers will send their number two quarterback out. And he's going to get some, some real uh, real reps here now. Now quarterback for the Tigers, number 12, Brady Jones. So the Tigers next week head down to Southwestern. And here's the give right up the middle. And all the way inside the 40. Another nine-yard pickup on the play for RCC. So they'll start to clear their bench. That's... Divine Pearson out of Chaparral. Big win for the Cougars this weekend. Huge win. There was upsets abound yesterday and, and Thursday night. So nine-yard pick up to the 38, second and two. Or second and one, excuse me. Jones throwing complete about the 45-yard line. That's Modica inside the 30. He'll go out of bounds to the 28. So about a 10-yard pick up. Move the sticks. So Modica's, or Modica's fifth reception today. From Smack Over, Arkansas. That's my favorite town. Indeed. Let's move to Smack Over. Let, let's, yeah. You and I, we can move to Smack Over and we could. We we'll, get can, us, we'll get a summer home there. <laughs> Smack Over, Arkansas. Yeah, Monaco was a big time player. He played all over the place in high school. So, uh, first and 10 from the 28. Here's the gift to Pearson. Define Pearson. Puts his shoulder down. Tackle on the play made by Timon Palify. One of two twins. Uh, well, no, it's not. What's? Well, yes, well, it's the same name. So you know, it looks like they're brothers, but it's the same name, wearing two different numbers on the roster. Third down, second and two after the eight-yard pickup. Quick throw, complete, and it'll be a first down. Caden Willerford out of Aquinas. Yes, and now we have the freshman. Ten. Ball down to the 14-yard line. Sticks move up. 
So 11 different players now have, have caught footballs. Jones RGC. complete out of the backfield. It's big Connor May rumbling inside the 10, still on his feet. Finally, the whistle's blown. Make that 12. Is Connor May. They'll mark the ball to the, where are they going to mark it to? The seven-yard line. So seven-yard pickup on the play, second down. And moving fairly efficiently down the field out of the Tigers. They got the ball right near midfield, so pretty good field position. And here's the gift to Pearson dancing. Got a little bit of wiggle to him. And into the end zone for the touchdown. Divine Pearson touchdown. Seven-yard run. And the Tigers picking up, Jeff, right where they left off. Holy cow. I mean, this is a, a smorgasbord of offense. And nothing on the defensive side. It's like going to a... To a buffet empty handed if you're the offense for Grossmont. Can't eat. PAT forthcoming. And Panikowski pumps it through. It's 49 0. And we've just really started here in the third quarter. Here's the run by Pearson running right up the middle. Roush combining with Ampudia on the push on the offensive line. So the kickoff upcoming. I'm curious to know what the all-time record is for points. It could happen. Yeah, it's been a tough year for Grossmont, but I don't think, I think 49 is about the, the most they've given up. They allow 40... Was it? They're allowing uh, 40.6 points and 400 yards. I'm guessing the Tigers are probably right around both numbers right now. I mean, obviously they got 49, but in terms of the yardage, they've been piling up yardage as well. So the fair catch, the few that come out as a touchback. And, I mean, you know, we talk about it a lot. You know, Panikowski's such a weapon for how he's able to boom those kickoffs, Jeff. He is, and he puts it exactly where he wants it. My big question is, and, and this is a question that has gone on for time, is, you know, he has two different kinds of shoes on if, as we look. Mm -hmm. well, can, can he just wear one of the other? Like, does he have to have two different kinds of shoes? Maybe that's how it works for him, man. But, but couldn't they make a shoe that's the same color? And the same, make him look. I mean, Next time like we're it, down on the field, you can ask him. I want to ask him. I'm going to go, why? It looks like you woke up and just, you know, didn't know where your shoes like were. Like Luke. Yeah, it's like my six-year-old. <laughs> Running into the line is the tailback, Kyle Gordon. Well, there certainly is a method to Panikowski's madness because you can't argue with his success. No. You can't argue with his performance. So Kyle Gordon stopped right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, making the tackle. Aho Makaafi on the off, uh, the defensive line. So they've gone to a four-man front here in the second half. The clock ticking away. So, yeah, uh, 49 points is the most allowed by Grossmont on the year. They lost 45-38 to East L.A., 34-31 at Antelope Valley, 36-15 against Citrus, 45-3 against Mesa, 43-16 at Palomar. Here's the handoff on second down. Will push forward to about the 27-yard line, so two yards on the play. And this first uh, defense is still in for the Tigers, the first group. Javier Sandoval, also out of Aquinas, makes the tackle for RCC. Well, Marcus Jones is in, and then Avery Iosefa Hart. I think he might be coming off an injury. I don't think he played against Mount San Jacinto. And looks like they flip Boger over to the right side. Third down. Giles to throw, looking for everything. Down the field, one-on-one -on -one with Baptiste is Ryan Rodiak. Rodiak, a freshman out of Grossmont High in the San Diego area, incomplete, and fourth down coming up. So the punt team comes out. We'll get a look at John Butcher again. The butcher. The butcher, the baker. 
the candlestick maker? Um, the the butcher, no. the banker, and the left-handed punter. No, I don't know if he's. I don't even know if he's lefty. Uh, Grossmont High to Grossmont College reminds me of the scene in Sea of Love when Al Pacino tells Ellen Barkin, "So you've gone from York to New York." <laughs> She's from York, Pennsylvania, yes. in, the, in the story. Pacino, the great John Goodman in that movie as well. Of course, Alan Barkin. And Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker. He's so good. He's good in everything. He's great in Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you know? Have you, I did not know that it was that was him. Now, now it makes sense, though. Will Bond and McDaniel back deep. And they'll back it up another five yards. And Michael Rooker had the big thing in his forehead, remember? Yeah. Blue guy. So back to the 22-yard line before Butcher lets the punt go. Here's the kick. It'll go out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to say it went out of bounds at the 48-yard line. So a 26-yard kick, no return, and good field position for RCC, first and 10 from the 48. Now, we just found out from our dear friend, the writer, the Pope on a rope, Dennis Pope. Told your, me. your dear friend. Don't, don't speak for me. Okay, he's my friend. My friend, it's 77 twice in the last 10 years and 76 once. Okay. So Tigers here could, are, are look, flirting with uh, history. So from the 47, Brady Jones to throw. Tries to dump it off, and it's incomplete. Good rush coming. We talked about the front seven for Grossmont, and that was Daniel Serpa, the sophomore from Chandler, Arizona, coming in. He had a good year last year as well. He was applying the pressure to Brady Jones, who dumped it off and couldn't quite complete it. Here's another look at the play. Here's big number 98 rolling in. And then it looks like the intended receiver for RCC got tangled up with his own guy. That was Andre Branch getting tangled up with his own man. Second and 10. This is Branch up the middle, leaning forward inside the 40 to the 39-yard line, eight yards on the play. One of the things in my chat with Tom Kraft was, hey, we need to get this running game going. Oh, they've got, they've had it going. You know, we, we haven't seen, well, we've seen the great Bryce Strong. Well, he, yeah, he's, he was done he's after done. the second yeah, quarter. He was. And then Allende Boncoli, and now we're seeing Pearson. We saw Pearson score, and now Branch is in on this series. And not a lot of Boncoli tonight. I mean, he didn't. But nice to see him out there. They've been a great one-two punch. You can just give the ball to Branch, and Branch has the first down to the 35-yard line. So four more yards for Andre Branch. Clock continues to move. And we're just in the third quarter, 49 nothing. The Tigers over the Griffins have been fairly dominant. As we like to say, the battle station fully operational. Fully operational. So Kajaya Holloway splits out to the near side turn and give to Branch, and he'll be ridden down. Maybe a loss on the play. So a Johnny Hicks, the freshman from Chula Vista, Sweetwater High, initially signed with D2 Fort Lewis. Things didn't work out. Bounced back to his hometown team. Sherpa, Serpa was around the play as well for uh, Grossmont. Second down, two-yard loss. Is that a book series, the Sweet Valley High book series? The Sweet Valley High, yes. Sweet Fountain Valley High. That's my, my theory. It's based on Fountain Valley High. Here's the throw, incomplete. Another miscommunication. Nearly making the play was Askridge. Incomplete and third down coming up. So might we see the punt for the Tigers here? They got the short field. I see. I think they go to Connor May here, Jeff. Is it Connor May? Oh yeah, I think Connor May gets think it. You think we're gonna... So three receivers split out to the bottom of the screen. Jones rolling. He's got some time. He'll fling it and incomplete. Good play on defense there. Corbin Hale, the intended receiver, who yeah. just came in the ball game out of Orange High School in Whittier. 
Jaden Muldown on the coverage makes it fourth down, and we'll see for the first time the punter, Nathaniel Wallace Dilling. Who? From St. Francis de Sales. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, we were incorrect. You know, on the roster, it said he's from Columbia, Ohio. He's not from Columbia. It's, it's he com- is from Columbus. Columbia. Now, I knew he was from the Columbus area. As I mentioned, a fr- old friend of mine, Tom Snyder, is the voice of St. Francis de Sales uh, High School football, and he's also the PA man for Ohio State. Punt down on the nine-yard line. Nice coverage. That was Pearson down on the coverage. And Branch again. Sorry, Branch, yeah, Branch on the coverage. Making the catch was James Johnson. How about Branch on the coverage there? So 29-yard kick, no return. And Grossmont starts off inside the nine. Yeah, Branch was the original guy in the in the last half to make that big tackle and makes another one right there. The first punt of the afternoon for RCC. And I'm telling you, when I talk to Tom Kraft, next time he'll say you shouldn't have been, we shouldn't have punted. <laughs> For uh, 7.45 to play third quarter, Grossmont just trying to muster a little bit of resistance. Just trying to, you know, get the ball to the other side of the 50. Here's the give to Ned, and Ned kind of pinballs up over the five, maybe lost a yard on the play. Ned, the freshman out of Notre Dame in the Valley. Didn't we call the Notre Dame game against North a couple years ago? Was it Notre Dame? Sherman Oaks was... A playoff game? No, that was Oaks Christian. Oaks Christian, that's right. Yeah, Oaks Christian won that one. Oaks Christian, remember, they were hurt all year. They slid down a couple of divisions. Yes. They probably should have been D3, D4. They were down in D5. Second and 11. Here's the give up to about the 10-yard line. That's Kyle Gordon again. Third down coming up. Tough afternoon for Grossmont and the Griffins. 0-5 coming in. And the Tigers coming off the bye. You mentioned little, trying to be a little angrier, a little hungrier. What a good talk with James Cook before the before the game. Yeah, it was nice. I, I had never really had a, a chance to talk with him. Smartest man in football. Because I'm scared to death of uh, to talk to Coach Kraft. He walks away when he sees me. Third and nine. Giles dancing. Giles throwing. Nice catch at about the 25. Rodiak with a nice little move up to the 41-yard line where he's finally pulled down. Rodiak makes the catch, making the tackle for RCC. Matthew Eskridge out of Desert Pine. He's one of the guys, Coach Kraft, has said, hey, he's been a bit of a surprise. He's been really good for us. Nice job by Giles here. Buys a little bit of time, and then Rodiak comes open, comes back to his QB. Bradbury can't quite bring him down, and then Eskridge, Eskridge comes in and makes the tackle. So to the 41-yard line, gain of 33. Here's the give. And this is Gordon again over the right side, maybe back to the line of scrimmage as the clock continues to move. But if you're Grossmont here, you're just, you know, let's let's just every series we'll play we'll go play to play and let's have some success every series. Grossmont hosts Saddleback next week, then they go to Fullerton, then they're at Mount San Jacinto, and they're finish up at home against Southwestern. And next week RCC will place Southwestern. Six PM start at Southwestern. Gordon dancing, trying to find his way inside. That clogs up easily. Eskridge comes through among two other Tigers on the play. Also knows around the football, Javier Sandoval, along with David Medellin out of La Quinta. Medellin. Got into the game against Mount San Jacinto. Third down, clock continuing to move. No hurry for Grossmont here, down 49 nothing. Rodiak split out to the top of the screen. Gooden dot into the bottom of the screen. Here comes pressure. Giles stepping up and throwing. Nearly a nice catch by Gooden Dotton. Good coverage on the play by Taven Anderson, the freshman out of Beaumont. 
flag on the play. It'll be against RCC. So the drive extended. And, you know, you were talking with Coach Cook before the game about the discipline. A couple of personal fouls against the Tigers here today. And I even said that. I said, well, you're not getting any of those goofy penalties in tight games anymore. He says, well, I kind of wish we would get a couple uh, tough, you know, a, a couple toughness penalties. And there you go right there. Well, I don't think at 49 nothing. that's not really a toughest penalty, right? That's, I guess not. That's just a dumb penalty. Being nice. First and 10 from the 44. Good, uh, Gordon takes it to the 41-yard line. Somebody's helmet comes off. So a Tiger helmet came off. So that player, there you, there you see him, they have to come off the field. So they move to the 42-yard line. Good and dot into the near side. Calupe right next to him in the near slot. Giles looking, throwing, and it's intercepted. Intercepted at the 10, still dancing with it. Making a move is Landon Dabram, and Dabram up over the 30-yard line. And I think he lost it. So they're going to figure out where to spot it. Dabram out of Rancho Verde. So from the 30, first and 10 RCC. Crockett right up the middle to midfield, and he's knocked down by Palafay. Carrying the ball. Omarius Burnham out of Conyers, Georgia, Salem High School. He got into the game against Mount San Jacinto as well. Burnham running the ball up the middle into... Grossmont territory, 23-yard pickup there. They'll go right back to Burnham, and the whistles blow. You got a false start there. So the, the newer guys, the guys that don't get to play very much, yeah, get you know make a few mistakes here, but that's okay. Getting some action, we're going to need somebody. I'm sure it'll step up. So ball moves back to the 48-yard line on the RCC side. Here's Burnham again. Burnham's got a hold now. Burnham to the 40, 35, 30, and finally pulled down at about the 23-yard line. Combining on the stop for Grossmont. Timon Palafay along with Matthew Diaz. Another great run here. Looks like you're starting to go run out of gas a bit there, about the 20-yard line. So their 20-plus yard run, and a Tiger down on the play. It's one of one of the offensive linemen for RCC is down. Jaden Forbotten looks like he's down. Sophomore out of Chaparral. One of the starters at left guard started against Mount San Jacinto as well. So clock stops here with 2.17 to play in the third quarter. 49 nothing Tigers. But it was 42 nothing at the end of the first half. Just a touchdown here in the second half. Came at 11.27. Divine Pearson took it in from seven yards out. That first offensive drive for RCC. And we had a good talk. I had a good talk with uh, Coach uh, Cook before the game. You know, he started off, he was going to get into sports medicine. He was going to be an athletic trainer. And obviously wanted to still be on the field, but that training helps him immensely. And we were talking about uh, uh, Kavon Baptiste earlier. You know, he had two ACL injuries 
while he was at San Jose State. So obviously Coach Cook, you know, wants him in there because he's an effective player, but understanding what he went through in terms of his rehab from a mental standpoint is really helps him in terms of working with some of these defensive guys. Well, and it's a great story. I mean, he, we were joking beforehand, a graduate – a graduate of UC Irvine like yourself. Great football school. Great football school. James Cook and Darren Fells. Yeah. How does the, how does a guy become the defensive coordinator, the best defensive coordinator in J.C. Uh, college football in the country, and never – I mean, how did he get into it? After he was done at Irvine? Well, you know, he, he was a Valley kid, so I mean, played high school football. I'm guessing he wanted to get into you know being an athletic trainer. And he told me, he said, I just wanted to be on the field again. So – he was over at Pasadena for a little bit and then found his way to Tom Craft, and the rest, as they say, is history. First and 10 from the 21. Here's the give right back to Burnham. Omarius Burnham falls forward to about the 14-yard line. Six more yards for him as the clock keeps churning. And now Verbotten will check back into the game. And another Tiger down. So if we donate, like, I saw a commercial the other day that you could donate, like, $19 a month to save the Tigers. I think we ought to donate 19 a month here to save the Tigers that are going down here in the last couple minutes. So those of you that are watching, we need to uh, donate some money to keep the Tigers okay and safe. Is that the World Wildlife Fund? It is, the World Wildlife Fund. What, what was the fund on uh, on Seinfeld? The human fund. The human fund. Money for people. <laughs> 49 nothing here. A minute 37 to play in the third quarter. A Tiger down on the field. Let's see who it is. Oh, wow. That's not good. Oh. A little bit of whiplash there. I believe that's uh, Ampudia, the center. Yeah, that's something you don't want to see again on, on video. We've seen some some horror, horrific things. Not that was not good. Well, he's the good news is he's sitting up now. They're adjusting. I think it's the left leg they're looking at that kind of went under him. We saw that happen yesterday. You weren't there, but Isaiah Miramontes kind of had his leg bend under him a little bit. Had to leave Ow. the game for a couple of play, a couple of series. So can't put any pressure on the leg, Calvin. Um, Puria, who is a out of Murrieta Valley competitor, great technique according to Tom Craft. A little bit undersized and you know filling some big shoes. Now they moved. We mentioned they moved Nephi to Isop, uh, Sopo over to center as well, so they're kind of splitting time now. But you know Big Ed Riley, who played, he's now at Southern Utah, I believe. He was one of the better players in Tom Craft said he's the best center that's ever come through here. Wow, yeah, that's high praise. Yeah. So big shoes to perform. Now, Pudia played last year at Palomar. Here's the give. This is Branch moving to the outside. And Branch down to the 10-yard line, about six yards on the play. So some guys who don't normally get a shot getting an opportunity here to get some film for Tom Craft. You know, we had a game, a high school game two weeks ago. I, I st- still label it the worst high school game ever played. Mm-hmm. I, I, I did a uh, flag football game this week, Casal. Mm-hmm. And guess what happened in the third quarter? What happened? Game ca- got canceled again. For what? Two weeks in a row. Why? Girl got her face stepped on. Oh. So they canceled the game. Wow. Her face was all over the field, apparently. She's okay. But they canceled the game. Here's the give to Branch, angling to the outside. He'll be bought down inside the 10. Combining on the tackle, as Johnny Hicks gets some help on the play for Raymond Bernard, the sophomore out of San Diego. Patrick Henry High School, maybe he and Omar Hammond played together. And that'll be the last play here in the third quarter. 49 nothing, a 7 put up on the board in the third quarter by the Tigers. They lead Grossmont. Do we have Pep? All right, we don't have Pep. It's okay. 49, Pep can hang out. It's all right. Tigers 49, Griffins nothing. I think we do have Pep over there. Okay, let's throw it down to Pep Fernandez. Is he ready? Yeah. I, well, you got to hear more about the Cannon Man. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. Another look at that play. I see Pep over there. He's got his team shoes on. Uh, 
Tigers at the three. They could be poised to go into the end zone again. 56 would be the most points. Well, I think they already scored the most points they've scored on the year, right? 49 is the most they've scored this year. I think it was 45 before today. So the 41 and then 45 against El Camino and against uh, Palomar. Touchdown Branch takes it in from three yards out. Yeah, they put up 45 twice this year. So, yeah, 49 the most. Now they're up to 56 points. That's the most points that Grossmont has given up. And now we'll go down to Pep Fernandez. Yes, go Pep. <laughs> Finally, uh, we've got Otto Salem here. We had to do that interview at halftime. Uh, we had some audio issues, but we're back with Otto, who just fired the cannon after another RCC touchdown. And, Otto, let's be careful. I know we've got some chairs back here, but let's, uh, Bob, we're going to move over here real quick and uh, take a look at this cannon. Otto, you were just beginning to tell us that you built this cannon yourself. It's the second generation, the second version of it, right? But you built this cannon, right? And uh, why did you do that? Well, some 16-plus years ago, my daughter, who's the uh, cheer director here, came to me and said, well, Dad, we need something to spice up our, our halftime. So she says, we'd like to can it, similar to what the four-year colleges use at a, at a junior college. So I thought, well, we'll make a cannon now. And uh, we went from there, and uh, we have it to this day, and we've been doing it every game that we can, all the home games. And what we do is we fire it off after every touchdown and after the uh, band concludes their opening ceremonies. And that's the way we've been doing it. And it's been a very busy day for you because they've scored a lot of touchdowns. In fact, the most points they've scored this season. Do you just bring a, a ton of shells and just be ready for any scenario? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, uh, it's a hopeful thing when we get uh, to use a bunch of shells. The kids love it. So. All right, Otto, real quick. Bob, let's get a, just a closer look real, real quick. And, and Otto, can you kind of explain uh, what we're looking at here? Because you said you designed it. it obviously, it's black and orange for the RCC colors, but you're going to add some some decals to it and whatnot? Yeah. Yes, we're gonna. This is like this is a second generation cannon, and uh, the uh, uh, we've just got the decals today for it. But it'll have RCCs on the front of it here, and it'll have a uh, tiger's head with flames going down the cannon when we get those on there. So it should dress it up a little bit, make it nicer. All right, so this is Otto Salem, but you might know him around these parts as the Cannon Guy. Do most people just call you the Cannon Guy? Yes, that's it, the Cannon Guy. <laughs> all right, guys, he's been very busy today, and that's good if you're an RCC football fan. Gazal, Jeff, back up to you guys. I thought William Conrad was Cannon. Yeah, he was Cannon. That's right. <laughs> okay, no, but the Cannon Man, thanks. Great, great insight there from Pep Fernandez from the 25. It was a touchback and an extra point that we missed. And finally, some positive yardage here for Grossmont. The quarterback, Youngman, making the play. Hey, uh, what, now, I really think RCC, RCC should take the cannon on the road. Well, you know, there's a battle for the cannon today. There is. Uh, up in Reno at Mackey Stadium, UNLV plays Nevada. Well, I don't think it's much of a battle. The, the battle for the cannon, yeah. <laughs> the battle for the cannon's going to go to UNLV, I think. They're pretty good this year. Yeah, but I want to take that thing on the road. Nine-yard pickup for Trevor Youngman, and they'll hand the ball off, trying to get the first down, and he'll get it now. That was, uh, I believe that was Gordon, who's still on his feet, pushing forward, and now he'll for sure have it up to the 39. Well, see, he didn't ask the question I would have asked. What would you have asked? I just said, hey, have you ever shot this thing in your backyard with a real cannonball? Mm, there you go. All like, right. How far will it go? I mean, it's just question after yeah. question. Have you ever used this in your pool? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> do the boys the like cannonball. cannonballing into the pool? Oh, yeah, they do. Oh, I, they love it. So do I, though, because, you know, I'm a big, huge human being. Right. And You're I, large displace, man. I displace a lot of water. You're like Bruno Sammartino. He's a very large <laughs> man. <laughs> I want to know if he's ever shot a cannonball out of that thing. Up to the 38-yard line. First and 10. Youngman takes it, slides up, and runs right into Fuamatu. They'll mark him up to the 43-yard line. So five yards on first down, and here comes the flag. Some post-play activity. Yeah, that's the question I want to know. If it's, if it's a real cannon. Do you have any, you, know, you go, hey, if you're hanging out with your buddy, you have a handgun? They go, no. Do you have a bow and arrow? No. What do you have? I have a cannon. Cannon, yeah. <laughs> 
just keep it in your living room, pointing towards the door. Anybody comes near, you just light it up. It'd be a little unwieldy, right? But do you think there was a, a, a fuse, or do they pull? I mean, is it like a pull thing? That's what I want to know. Pep didn't get it deep enough. So mark it off 15 yards. Personal foul against RCC. From the 42, it's a first and 10. Out of the backfield, Kalupe catching it, and Bradbury will spin him out of bounds at about the 41-yard line, so maybe a loss of a yard on the play. They'll give him a game. They'll give him the forward progress to the 41. Second down. Fifty-six, nothing. The Tigers on top here. Out of the backfield. Gooden Dotton inside falls inside the forty. Third down coming up. Last shutout for the Tigers. Take a guess, Jeff. When was the last shutout? Eighteen eighty-seven. That was when Riverside Poly High School opened. There you go. Uh, November 23rd, 2019, in the Southern Regional Semifinal, 48 nothing over Mount San Antonio. Wow. Going back that far, yeah. 2019. So right now they're 11 minutes and 40-some seconds away from potential their first shutout since then. That was a big shutout, too, 48 points in a playoff game. Complete to Johnson. He's spun down immediately. Gets maybe to the 38-yard line. Making the tackle for RCC, Miguel Becker the third, out of San Antonio, Texas. Bet he's a big Tim Duncan fan. Or Ma- Ginobili. Ginobili. Manu Ginobili. 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 Have you ever been to San Antonio? I have. Isn't it kind of cool? I like it. It's a cool little town. Kind of southwestern flair. Do you like Tex-Mex? I do. You I do? actually do. I never did. I had a professor who was from Texas, and he insisted we had a meeting, and he insisted on going to Chili's. And I was like, really? And he said, no, I really like Tex-Mex. And he's actually from Texas, so I didn't feel so bad about it. Incomplete. Yeah, but Youngman that's, throwing it out that's there. That's really not Tex-Mex. I agree. No, you're right. I'm not a fan, though. I'm not a fan of Tex-Mex. You're not? Okay. I like my La Michoacan tacos. Ball over on downs to RCC. They went for it on fourth down and turned it over, so the shutout's still intact if the Tigers won it. And, you know, this has got to be tough, I mean, for Grossmont. Um, you know, obviously you're 0-5, you're having a rough year, but I'm wondering, there's got to be, you know, and unfortunately we weren't able to talk. Usually I'll get the chance to talk to the other team's coach, and for whatever reason they wouldn't, you know, Grossmont would not accommodate that. So I would have loved to have known, like, what's, what's going on over with that program? A once-proud program is Pearson is spun down. At about the 44-yard line, gets about five yards on the play. Jaden Kyo's still in there. Because this program, I mean, they won a national championship in 2005, and they've gone back and forth. You mentioned they were in the American division. They kind of came back to the national division just this year, trying to build something. Pearson again into Grossmont territory. He'll move the sticks. Another seven yards on the play. I love the shiftiness of Divine Pearson. Has a little wiggle to him when he carries the football. To the 49. And the big boys up front still continuing to fire off for RCC. First and 10. Pearson again angling to the left side. And he'll dive down near another first down. Acreage in there, along with Colton Guerrero on the tackle. I think our guy, oh, there he is, Pep Fernandez, is talking to Gabe for me. Oh, maybe they're asking about the shoes. He is asking about the shoes and the T. I That's think. why he's such a pro. Oh, he's so good. From the 41-yard line, it's the second and short for RCC. Shifting into motion, that's Josiah Cornwell, the backup tight end. Here's Pearson right up the middle. Have the first down. 
Colton Guerrero right there to meet him, but he gets the first down to the 36-yard line. Not 37, call it. Four more yards. Now, unfortunately, as I mentioned, folks, no live stats today, so we can't tell you what the offensive output is, and we didn't realize it until the game had already started. Otherwise, I would have definitely kept my own. Pearson dancing. And again, slithering up inside the 30. Man, he knows how to find space. He's like a cobra. Divine. Clock continuing to move. First down and 10. Check that, though. He didn't quite get the first down. He got to the 29-yard line, so eight yards. Second down and two. Clock continuing to move. Second down play as Brady Jones brings them to the line of scrimmage. Jones with the play action will keep it himself, and he'll fall forward. Blowing up the play for Grossmont is Yasir Blair, the freshman from El Cajon Valley. Let's throw it down to Pep Fernandez, standing by with Gabe Panikowski. Yeah, guys, I'm doing some uh, serious investigative journalism. I'm going to step out of the way, and maybe Bob can get a shot of Gabe Panikowski's uh, cleats. Did he just walk out of the frame? He might have. But I'll tell you this. Um, so Gabe was telling me that the left foot is Adidas, and it's a football cleat because it's got good stability. The right, though, and the, the left one is white. The right one is black. It's thinner. It's a soccer cleat, so you can actually feel the contact with the football. So, Jeff, I know you were calling him out. Why does he have two different cleats? That's why. He's got a football one. He's got a soccer one. One is durable and strong. The other one is thin and uh, able to get that contact with the pigskin. And uh, two different brands as well. Who knew, guys? One to plant, one to kick. Makes complete sense. First down. The run by Branch got them the first down. They go right back to Andre Branch here. He'll traverse inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. So you know what I took from that uh, interview or that talk about right there? Mm-hmm. Is that uh, it's like a ballet shoe. He could feel it in his feet. Two-yard gain to Johnny Hicks on the tackle. I think he should kick barefoot like the old days. Florian Kempf from the Houston Oilers was a barefoot kicker, among others. Second and seven coming up, and a bunch of whistles blowing. False start RCC. And, you know, these are things they're going to go back and evaluate on film, Jeff. So Brady Jones will get a, an earful from Tom Kraft about the, the false start. As well he should. He's a young guy. Yell at him. Well, you know, it's interesting because you and I were talking. We had heard that, you know, late in the summer that Brady Jones was still in contention potentially to start this year for RCC. But Barton had other other uh, yeah, ideas. Yeah, Barton won the job. Pearson. Oh, look, there's Devine the still on his feet. Pearson diving forth to inside the 10-yard line. Right, here we go. Here we go. We got a good look at the shoe here. So a 15-yard run, they'll give him the first down, first and goal. Yeah, he's crossed. Look, he's also, what are they, cross-branding? One's an Adidas and one's, it is like a ballet shoe. I wonder if he can stand on his toes. First and goal from the 10. The bond split out to the near side. Here's Pearson shifting, dancing. He'll be tackled inside the five. And Getting up from the bottom of the pile, Kristen Boykins in on the play. Got some help on the tackle from Diego Pichet. Pichet, the lineman from Lincoln. Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is foot. I wonder if he gets pedicures to make sure his feet. You don't want injury, injured feet. Pearson down inside the five to the four. So six yards, seven yards on the play. Pearson dives right at the goal line. Third down and goal coming up. First game, bit of a passing clinic. Second game has been more of a run clinic for the Tigers, Jeff. Yeah, they just want to get this game over with, make sure nobody gets hurt. And, you know, the first half went a little long. This second half, man, it seems like it's flown by. Here's the give. Oh. He's in. He should be in. No signal yet, though. They're going to say he's down. The knee was down. 
Now they're going to unstack the pile. I thought Pearson had kind of put the ball over the plane. I but mean, that's it, with the naked eye. It was a whiplash tackle here. Watch. That's a great tackle. Oh. Touchdown. Yes. Well, good thing we got Pearson already with a touchdown highlight because the late decision by the officials couldn't quite give the touchdown call on the play-by-play, but the Tigers into their 60s. Wow, look, cannon man. And the cannon fires off yet again. 62 nothing. the Tigers leading Grossmont and looking for their first shutout since November of 2019 and a Griffin player down on the play. Hopefully he's all right. I didn't bring up Harry Potter one time today because all until just now. It's all right. It's like bringing up liverwurst. You know, I just let the let that go. Hey, no, no, no. I had a liverwurst sandwich this week. Let me ask you: Do you put mustard on your liverwurst? Oh, a ton of mustard. There you go. Oh. Do you like liver and onions? Yeah, I haven't really had a lot of it. You haven't. Nope. Next time you come over, I'll make you some liver and onions. So here we go. Here's the touchdown. Okay, so watch the watch where the where the yellow arrow is pointing. You'll see the injury happen. And so Pearson in. Oh man, that didn't look good. So walking off under his own power, so it's always that's always good to see. That's always positive. Did you like the teletrade? Hey, we didn't talk about last night at all, about next week where we're going to have the red zone or the pep zone, they call it. Yeah, we've got the pep zone going for the high school football. Panikowski will uh, kick it up and through 63 to nothing. Are we going back to pep? We better go back to All right. We'll keep it up here around 63 nothing, and the Tigers efforting their first shutout since November of 2019 in a playoff game, and they got four minutes and 20 seconds to go. There's the touchdown by Devon Pearson. So Pearson with two trips to the end zone. So Devon Pearson, and he was a guy that when I talked to Coach Kraft mentioned, he goes, hey, we got to get the running game going. Obviously, strong in Ben Coley, but he said, we've had a lot of good play from running backs. And he mentioned Devon Pearson, and you can see why. He's got that little wiggle, you know, kind of shifty runner. He's slithery like a, like a cobra. You know, uh, both Ben Coley and Strong a little bit more physical. Although, you know, Bryce Strong, not a big guy, but he is pretty physical when he runs. And Pearson kind of more the elusive one. And then we've seen Burnham as well, and we've seen Branch as well. They both run. They've all run well today. Embarrassment of riches for RCC at the running back position. And of course, the great Gabe Panikowski. Tory Pines High, same high school as John Lynch. Touchback as the fair catch is called for by Grossmont. You interested in knowing the notable alumni from Grossmont College? Grossmont College, believe it or not. You you have a notable alum? Oh, I do. Well, because a couple of them are football guys, right? Okay. So Achilles Smith, if you remember, played at Grossmont and then went to Oregon, was a top five pick in the draft, I believe, by the Bengals back in the, I think, 98 or 99 draft. He was the same draft as Cade McNown and all those guys. Um, first and 10 from the 25. Trevor Youngman back in at quarterback. Here's the give, and Gordon stopped. Lot lose a couple. Uh, remember Brian Sipe played at San Diego State. And the Cleveland Browns. Also played at Grossmont. The mistake on the lake, the interception, in the AFC Championship game to Mike Davis and a 14-12 loss. I believe that was 1980. Any pop culture people? Oh, of course. I want to bring one more football person up. Brad DeLuiso, who was a kicker for UCLA. He also kicked for the New York Giants. I think he was on that 2001 team that lost to the Ravens in the Super Bowl. Second and 11 after the one-yard loss. Youngman to throw, stepping up. Throwing to the right side, it's complete to Kalupe. Making the tackle on the play for RCC. 
is Jalen Nutt out of San Antonio as well. Smithson Valley High. So clock continues to move a first down for the Griffins. Did you ever watch the OC? No. Okay, so I'll leave that one alone. I, I, I'm a grown man. Rachel Bilson is a Grossmont uh, person. How about, uh, well, going back to football, the great Cal quarterback Joe Roth. Joe Roth! Passed away. Uh, he is uh, a Grossmont alum, played for Michael Jordan's dad, Dave Jordan, who's the head coach for many years. Incomplete is Jungman trying to hit Jimenez, second and ten coming up. Co- comedian Doug Benson. Doug Benson! He's a Grossmont guy. Um, have you seen Airplane? Oh, come on. Robert Hayes. Robert Hayes? Attended Grossmont. Wow, Robert Hayes. David Leisure. Remember, he was in a lot of the, a lot of commercials? Yes. What was, what was, the sh- was he in Night Court? What was the show he was in? Yeah, he was also, uh, he was the Toyota guy. Yes. Second and ten, Youngman will take it himself, dance into the outside up to the 45. And ridden down after about a five-yard pickup on the play. Ridden down by Miguel Becker, the third out of San Antonio. He was uh, Joey Suzu. That's who he was, Joey Suzu. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, You ever watched Last Comic Standing? Yes. Dot Fan, who won that a few years ago. Kind of funny. He's headlining in Vegas now. And then uh, if you're a fan of movies or music, uh, Lester Banks... Who? Music music writer. He was portrayed by uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in the movie Almost Famous. The great Lester Bangs. And he's immortalized in the R.E.M. song, End of the World as We Know It. Wow. Yeah. Lenny Bruce, Leonid Bresneff, Lester Bangs. Yeah. The, all the three LBs. Neither, none of whom are linebackers. Youngman hangs it up in the air, and it's caught by Ned, and then it's dropped incomplete. Trayton Ned nearly reeled that one in for a big gain. Third down coming up. Somebody's hurt. So here's the replay. And he got hurt right there, twisted his ankle. You know, if the ground can't cause a fumble, they may, they may, I mean, they can't throw the flag for review. He lost the ball after he hit down. If we had replay, that would have been something worth looking at. It's another injury. I don't want to say anything until we know who it is. 2 1 to play. So, yes, a decent amount of uh, notable alumni from uh, Grossmont College. Sixty-three, nothing. Nothing notable about the performance today. There's got to be an explanation coming out of the bye. Injuries or whatnot. We mentioned we didn't have an opportunity to speak with anybody on the Grossmont side. Well, it's hard to get a hold of Michael Jordan. True. You have to go through his people. But I mean, I mean, you know, like Grossmont was a power. They were a real power for many years. So I don't know. Perhaps the administration maybe wanted to de-emphasize athletics. There could be reasons behind it. But in the early to mid two thousands, they were a pretty strong program. And in recent years, they have not been. Jordan, last five years, uh, I mean, meaning Grossmont, under Michael Jordan, the last five years, just 13 and 32. Fourth down. They're going to go for it from the 47. Movement, it looks like it'll be a. Let's see, were they drawn, though? False start, move it back five yards for Grossmont. Now, we did see, who is it? We saw the Miami Dolphins put 70 on the Denver Broncos. Yeah, 70, what, 70 to 20? Yeah, and they could have put more, but they, they didn't. I think the NFL record is 73. The all-time high for RCC is 77. They're not going to do that, obviously. Fourth down. Youngman rolling, Youngman throwing, complete to Gooden Dotton. Did he get there? I think he's close. And yes, oh, incomplete. They say in, he didn't no. hold it. No, they did give it to him. Okay, good. Yeah, he did catch it. So it's a first down. So Youngman 
buying a little bit of time. And we talked about good and dot and good hands, and he runs routes well, and he makes right to the marker. First down at midfield for Grossmont. Tigers looking to maintain the shutout would be their first since November of 2019. Youngman will call his own number, bounces off one hit, and he'll lose a couple of yards. And lost his helmet, too. They're going to call a... Becker making the play for RCC, and then some tempers get a little bit heated. They'll blow the whistle, and flags come out. I think this is going to be a face mask, obviously. It's interesting because, you know, now covering soccer, the whole idea of the yellow card. If you misbehave, Jeffrey, we're gonna ha- we're gonna hold up a card what? to embarrass you, and then if you do it again, you're out. You get don't they give you a red card? Yeah, the second time it's a red card. Do they hold it up? And do they give it? to They you? do. They hold you it up. No, they, give- they hold it up right in front of you. It's what? like the scarlet letter. Oh my, son. Nathaniel Hawthorne and Hester Prynne. <laughs> my son plays soccer. He had a game today. Both your sons play in. soccer, huh? Both your sons play. Yeah, soccer. they both play soccer. One plays flag football and soccer, and then soccer and an actor. But I, I want one of my kids to get a red card or a yellow card. To the 15-yard mark-off, takes to the 36. Youngman flinging it for Gooden Dotton. Oh, he had it on his fingertips and couldn't hold it. So the shutout stays alive. Now, so most of the defense that's in for RCC now is a second-string defense, right? So if they give up a touchdown, you know, it is what it is. But you know those first-string guys in the locker room are going to razz them heavy if they can't maintain the shutout. That was a great, nearly a great catch. And I've been impressed by Elijah Gooden Dotton all night out of Cypress Ridge down there in the San Diego area. Second and 10 from the 36. Youngman can throw it. Complete to Kenneth Kalupe. Goes down to the 25-yard line. So that'll be another first down. They'll move the sticks. So the Griffins moving the sticks. 10-yard pickup to the 26. Sec first and 10. Youngman throwing outside. Incomplete intended for Johnson. Bradbury out of Summit, played for Nick Matheny. Second and ten. So good and dot into the top of your screen. Youngman steps up. Now he'll tuck it under and run it himself. Looking to get out of bounds. Goes up high and stays in bounds. He ended up trying to hurdle the tackler. Richard Finian Ganofo. Finian Ganofo out of modern day. So down to the 13-yard line. Clock continuing to move. Yeah, watch this. He tries to hurdle him. Like Reggie Bush against Fresno State back in 05. Here's the throw by Youngman. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Jimenez at the pylon. Clock stops, though. 16 seconds to play. So can RCC maintain the shutout? There's still some stakes here. The game was decided long ago. 63-0. The Tigers led 42-0 at halftime. But the defense looking to maintain their first clean sheet since back in November of 2019. November 23rd. They defeated on this field. They knocked off Mount Sack 48 nothing. That was in a playoff game. Second and 10 from the 13. Here's Youngman looking. He's got it. Intercepted. And that'll close it out. That's the coup de grace from RCC. Making the pick, Jalen Nutt. Nutt makes the pick, and the ball turned over to the Tigers. The shutout. 11 seconds needed, Jeff. Wow. Let's see if this is an... I thought it ball hit the ground, though. Let's see on the replay. Oh, that's a good catch. Place is going nuts. So Nutt seals it. And it'll just be a kneel down for RCC and a pretty dominant win. 63 points. The most since they scored, I believe it was 68 against Canyons in the state championship. Back in 2019, that was a great year. 
Is that the year they were national champs? That is the year they were national champions. So there's the kneel down by Brady Jones, and that's how it'll end, 63 nothing, And an impressive display of football tonight for the Tigers, Jeff, on both the offensive and the defensive side. Oh, they were great, phenomenal. They started up, you know, put up 28 in the first quarter there, and they just poured it on offensively. Defensively, they were very in sync. You could tell that they were ready. That The bye week really, really helped them. Coach Cook, tip my cap to him as well. Two things I take out of this one. Um, They really made a concerted effort to run the football, and they got four or five running backs in there. We saw Strong, we saw Bancole, we saw Burnham, we saw Branch, we saw Pearson. And then defensively, even though your starters weren't in there, to be able to maintain the shutout was big, and Youngman made it interesting at the end, the young quarterback for uh, Grossmont. So the final here, 63 nothing. We're efforting uh, Pep Fernandez when we get him. He'll get Coach Kraft when he's available. The Tigers, though, number one in the state and uh, just keeps on rolling. The battle station fully operational. They're number one in both polls. They're number six in the national poll, the J.C. Gridiron national poll that Brad Hoisted puts together. There's Bryce Strong. Look at that physicality at the end of the run, getting into the end zone off the contact. And then is another play here. Uh, this is Omar Hammond reeling that one in for the touchdown for RCC. And uh, here's Pearson, Divine Pearson, the first of his two touchdowns. Both some uh, tough mudding through the defense. Divine Pearson with the touchdown. Pep's got Coach Kraft will go down on the field. Pep Fernandez capping off the 63-0 Tigers victory. Yeah, thanks, guys. Down here with Coach Kraft. And, Coach, uh, 63-zip the final score today against Grossmont. What are your biggest takeaways from this uh, decisive win? Well... You know, the bye helps. Uh, we got a couple of guys nicked up, but uh, overall, we we did a fairly good job today. We still we still aren't done with cleaning up some things on both sides of the ball. I think we had 12 penalties on defense today that resulted in first down, so we got work to do. You feel like, though, coming off the bye, you saw some improvements, some things that you really liked today against Grossmont? Well, I saw some things from our defense, but I didn't from our offense and you know the score doesn't mean anything to me it's how we play so i'm a little disappointed and uh, i thought our defense would you know they got a shutout, out but 12 penalties he's only in the first down we got to clean that up and there's some things that we need to clean up but overall uh, we got off to a good start and uh, coming off the bye and uh, that's a good thing all right, Coach Kraft, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much. That's Tom Kraft, the head football coach for the RCC Tigers. Guys, um, we're going to try to effort a player. If we don't, I did want to pass this along for you. I know they are very excited to get that interception at the end to preserve that shutout. But more importantly, the coaches were saying that if they get a shutout, everybody gets donuts. So donuts for everybody with the shutout win today. Guys, back up to you. Okay, hopefully we can get a player as well. We'd love to get a player on there, maybe Jordan Barton or maybe one of the defensive guys after the shutout. Um, there's Tom Kraft for you, 63 nothing. The Tigers' dominant fashion today over Grossmont, Jeff. Yeah, it was, it was really impressive. I know C- Coach Kraft is going to give us the coach speak because he knows his guys. And uh, the thing is, Coach Kraft is a perfectionist, and I'll tell you, this was near perfection from what I've seen. It's the best Tiger team. I, I honestly believe this is a... You know, you hate to compare it to a national championship team, but they're a deep team. They're... They can throw all over the field. They can get guys, uh, ball in space, different guys, and the running game is something that they've lacked. You know, and it's it is a little bit of coach speak, but I understand what Coach Kraft is talking about, right? Because the two teams they beat the last two weeks, Mount San Jacinto and Grossmont, and no disrespect to either of those teams. I know how hard those coaches work and whatnot, but neither of them has won a game. So I think that's kind of what Coach Kraft is talking about because he's looking down the road at Saddleback, and he's looking down the road at Fullerton. And I I really do think we'll be right here. Well, if you can't make it to the game, we'll have it on Riverside TV November 11th against Fullerton College here. That that will likely be the the conference championship game. Yeah, and, you know, the tough thing, like you said, you're playing a team that's lost uh, all their games the last two weeks. You don't want that snake bite game to get you. No, you don't. You don't. But I mean, I but I understand. Next, yeah. I understand why Coach Kraft kind of seems like he's taking a bit of a hard line. I mean, I guess what he's telling his team is, listen, we're five and zero. Oh, they're zero oh and five. You're supposed to beat them. You're supposed to dominate teams like that. But we're going to evaluate beyond the scoreboard. That's kind of the lesson that he's, he's t- taking. Exactly. 
You're a coach. You understand that. Oh, of course. But, you know, my, my – thought was as a coach with these kind of wins is you know you're going to face that that adversity that's going to bite you and you've got to be ready to take that 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 bite and bite back yeah and you know great kudos obviously to tom Kraft and his team but james cook the defense coordinator as well he wanted a uh, kind of an elevation in the level of effort that they was getting on defense and for sure now remember something the st- I mean, most of the starters were out by the middle of the third quarter. That's the other thing you got to remember. So you're now trying to get guys who don't often get the minutes or get the opportunities on the same page. So we got Pep down on the field. He's got Jordan Barton, the winning quarterback today. He only played the first half. Let's see what Pep and Jordan have to say. Hey, what's up? Hey, guys, I'm just talking to uh, uh, Leo Tupo over here, former JW North guy. But, no, we got Jordan Barton here, quarterback for RCC. Jordan, 63 points, a lot to be happy about but, uh, about the offense. But we just talked to Coach Kraft, and despite 63 points, he's like, man, we, we can still be better. Like, you know, 63 is great, and the blowout win's great. But he feels like the offense is still progressing and getting better. What's your biggest takeaway from today? Yeah, uh, I think we did well coming out the bye week. We definitely cleaned a lot of things up, uh, made fewer mistakes. But we, did, we still made some mistakes today, so we've got to clean up. But for the most part, I mean, we score on every drive except for two of them. So, you know, we did well today. I'm, I'm proud of our team. So you guys come off the bye, big win today against Grossmont. Yeah. Now you look at the next couple of weeks, you know, trying to bring home a conference championship and, of course, eyeing the, the postseason after that. Do you feel like the this, this team's best football is still in front of it? Oh, for sure. I, I still think, you know, we haven't even reached our fullest potential yet. And I think once we do that, we're going to be a great team. And finally, man, your run game. I mean, Bryce Strong, he's, he's a beast back there. I know you've got some great receivers as well, but Bryce had three touchdowns in the first half. What can you say about the run game, the O-line, and, and Bryce? Our, our line's come a long way this year, and they're, they're getting it. You know, they're getting it set pretty well. And, you know, Bryce, he's a great runner. You know, not only can he run, but, you know, he can break tackles too. So that's awesome to see all the time. All right, Jordan, appreciate the time. Appreciate it. Jordan Barton, quarterback for RCC. Gazal, Jeff, I'll send it back up to you guys. Thank you, Pep. Uh, Gazal and Jeff back with you. And so now RCC 6-0, and and they're 3-0 and in league. So Fullerton already won. They beat Mesa. They're 3-0. and Showdown happening this evening. Saddleback and Palomar. That's a homecoming Palomar as well. It's a Saddleback homecoming. Palomar is there. So if Saddleback wins there, they would be 3-0. and So the Tigers next week go to Southwestern. Then Saddleback comes in here on October 20th. So that's, that's the next big one for rcc to play saddleback here at home on the 28th you don't obviously you don't want to get tripped up at southwestern but they've also been struggling a little bit this year and, and you want to you want to play the best at the very end because you want to go into the into the the playoffs playing the best so i i think this is going to be a great uh matchup for the tigers the last couple of weeks heading into the playoffs yeah so a tremendous display both on the offensive and defensive side for the tigers today 63 nothing the win over grossmont want to thank uh, Jeff Gore. want to thank uh, Pep Fernandez down on the sideline, our entire award-winning Riverside TV crew. My name is Kizal Hassan. We'll talk to you next time. 63 nothing. the Tigers over the Griffins. Until next time, so long, everybody.